Hello friends. Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting story on what if Naruto ignited power of the legendary Red Phoenix. But before we start, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start the story. I guess I could start this story out talking about the abuse I suffered or the pain and heartache I have felt or something like that. Well I want. Instead I will tell you about myself and my unique situation. There have only been a few people in all history who are like me. When I say like me I don't mean the vessel of a tailed beast or the son of a cage or even the plague of the village. No, when I say people like me I am talking about something the world has forgotten about. A being who has the ability to change. Now you may say everyone can change. Well, that would be true if the change is just something simple like a weight, where you live, who you hang with, who you love or hate. That is not the change I am talking about. Perhaps it would be best if I started with what no and then explain what you don't know. You all know how I was tricked into stealing the forbidden scroll and put on Team 7. You all know I went to wave and saved the country. You all know about the Chunin exams and the fight at the Valley of the End. But that is what you truly don't know. That event changed my life forever. Ironic, Sasuke said he wanted to cut all bonds. If he knew the bond he truly cut that day he would kill himself. After he stabbed me in the chest with the Chidori he caused my body to die originally. As I was laying there Kayubi did something no one would ever think a demon could do. He cried. In that moment the evil that had consumed him for 10,000 years was broken. In that moment when the Shinigami came to take our souls he made a deal with death. Let me tell you about it. Flash Kayubi cage. Naruto was leaning Ajons to wall. Feeling his spirit leaving his body. He was tired. Tired of the pain and tired of the loneliness. Tired of the hate and tired of being tired. A white light appeared and a spirit in a black robe descended from the ceiling and said, It's time mortals. A sob sound was heard and both the figure and Naruto looked over at the cage and Kayubi said, I want to ask you something Shinigami. Do you have the power to bestow the heavenly powers? The Shinigami said, Yes Kitsune. Why? Kayubi said, I offer you a trade. You know the seal won't take me and I will be freed within 20 years. The Shinigami said, Yes I know, not enough time has passed for it to take you fully. What do you care? Kayubi said, I will give myself for a trade. You know you won't have to take another soul for 100 years with mine and can take a vacation and let the others take your place during that time. In exchange I ask for a few things. The Shinigami said in a neutral tone, that would be. Kayubi looked at Naruto and said, The kid here. You know what his life has been like because of me. I want to repay him for giving me something I have not had in 1000 years. Hope. To repay him I want him to keep my power but I also want him to have the heavenly power of Phoenix. The Shinigami looked at him and said, Why do you want this mortal to have that power? Kayubi said, No matter what the kit will have humans trying to kill him because of me even with me gone. So that is why I want him to have my power. The phoenix power is so he can correct the mistakes of humans. I think he is worthy because he has a pure spirit. The Shinigami looked at Naruto and said, I can give it to him but he will not be able to go back to birth. I will sat it up so he can't go back before the age of five. To keep this power and be able to use it Aegean he must save one life for every time he goes back. If he goes back he will have to start from the same day every time. He must try and make the best life he can because he will be judged off of that life when he gives up the power. Kayubi said, very well. I agree to those terms. Naruto looked at what was going and tried to speak but did not even have the energy to speak. The Shinigami said, you will train him also Kitsune to properly use your powers. So I won't be taking you soul yet. You will have to explain a few things to him including his family. Do you agree? Kayubi said, yes. The Shinigami said, good and drew his sword and walked to Naruto and stabbed him in the seal on his stomach and then pulled it out and said, you will rise from the ashes of death to correct the wrongs you deem worthy to correct. You are now until the time you decide to release this power the phoenix. And placed the sword on Naruto's forehead causing him to scream out in pain as emblem of a phoenix appeared. The next thing Naruto saw was red flames and he woke up in his apartment in his bed and was five years old. This day would be his focus point until he deemed his life worthy. I began my training under the Kayubi and I learned some lesson but I had yet to make it past the valley of the end the three times I have gone back today started my fourth time. Naruto blinked and sighed looking up at the ceiling and said, so it begins again. 
He got up out of bed and went through his morning ritual. He quickly got dressed in his hideous orange suit and left his apartment. First stop, the Hokage office. Naruto took about 30 minutes getting across town to make it to the tower but not before pushing a civilian out of the way of a falling plant. He then snuck past the two guards at the mission room. He walked into the lobby of the Hokage's office and used a simple henge to look like Asuma and said, Is dad in? To the secretary. She blinked and said, Of course Asuma. Go on in. Asuma nodded and said, You might want to hold his appointments. This is going to take a while. The secretary nodded and Asuma walked into the Hokage's office and the third looked up and after Asuma closed the door he said, Who are you? Asuma chuckled and said, It's good to see you Aegean old man dropping the henge and showing a five-year-old Naruto. The third blinked and said, Naruto, what? He stopped as Naruto held up his hand. Naruto said, we need to talk and if the council knew I was in here right now Danzo would have his root member spy. That's why I hanged into your son. The third nodded slowly and said, what's so important that you would need secrecy and how do you know henge? Naruto sighed and said, may I, motioning to the chair. The third nodded and Naruto sat down and said, This is a long story so I already told your secretary to hold your meetings. That was your suggestion from before when I came back. The third said, I never. He stopped when Naruto held up his hand Aegean. Naruto said, You never told that to me in this timeline. To make a long story short and so you know this is not one of my simple pranks let me tell you a quick story that only you know the whole truth. If I can do that then I will also explain the rest. It's the least you could do for the son of Arashi Kazama and the vessel of Kayubi no Kitsune, he said with a smirk. The third blinked and paled and said, How? Naruto said, It's best to start from the begging or as ironic as it is the end or the valley of the end. I was dying from a Chidori from Sasuke Uchiha. I did not believe my teammate would actually do it so I powered down my Rasengan but with the curse seal he had from Orochimaru and his desire for revenge against Itachi he killed me. The Shinigami came to take my soul away but Kayubi made a deal with the Death God. Since he would be free after 20 years because we had not merged enough he offered his soul freely if the Shinigami would do two things. One give me all of Kayubi's powers and the second was give me the heavenly power of the Phoenix. With that power when I die as long as I save one person in my life I can go back Aegean to this day and start over. This is my fourth time. The first time Danzo killed me. The second time Orochimaru killed me. This last time Itachi killed me and so here I am Aegean. I have all my knowledge from the future but it won't matter that much as I change events. Even if you kill me now without believing me I will start over Aegean in a few minutes because on my way here I already saved the life of one person so I am guaranteed another chance and the next time I won't trust you. The third said, so why do you need to see me then? Naruto said, my body is that of a five-year-old. Even with Kayubi already changing it to make it stronger it won't matter with what's to come. The third said, I thought you said the, the Han Aegean. Naruto said, I told you that the Kayubi made the deal. The Shinigami said I would need guidance to use Kayubi's power and also to explain thing to me so he is keeping me and Kayubi together for now. Kayubi is training me to use his chakra and also to alter my own body so when he's not with me I can do it myself. And don't worry, I am not altering to be a demon or anything like that. It's just my healing ability, heightened senses, my bloodline and physical conditioning. The third looked at Naruto and said, Bloodline. Naruto said, Oh that's all right you don't know. Well you will get a kicker out of this. I did when Bakken told me. Do you know grandmother and grandfather are? The third said, Actually, no I don't. Arashi never trusted me with knowing who his wife was and as far as I know he was an orphan. Naruto said, He was in an orphanage but not because of his parents died. They are both alive and you actually know them. You watched them grow up and Granny never told you she was pregnant because she was afraid to disappointing you. Being her sensei and all. Naruto smirked as the wheels moved in the third's head and he paled. Naruto said, she really should quit drinking and gambling. But if she did that then her and grandfather never would have had dad. The third said, who was he? Naruto said, you have his book in your drawer under a genjutsu. The third chuckled knowing exactly who then and said, that is hard to believe that those two actually had a thing. Naruto said, from what I was told when I found out she was 15 at the time and you had sent them on missions together after her brother died. They got drunk. She made a bet and you can guess the rest. The third said, so what do you plan to do if with this info you have? Naruto said, 
Sertian events have to happen and can't be stopped, no matter how much I wish they could. The third said, and they are. Naruto said, sorry. I told you before and they blowed up in mine and your faces so we won't do that again. I have actually told you too much but since you will be dead when those events happen I can feel a little safe. As for now only I will know what is supposed to happen. I would like to tell you everything but if you intervene in the events or move too soon then Danzo and the council will have the leverage they need to remove you and kill me. The third sighed and said, is Theer anything you could do? Naruto thought for a moment and said, actually yes but it will take time and I don't know how you can do it but our ally Suna. Strengthen the bonds between our village. It will make things easier later. If you have to arrange a marriage. The K's cage has three children, Tamari, Konkuro and Gara. The first two would be good for a political marriage maybe but not Gara. The third said, why not Gara? Naruto said, he is a vessel also. The third paled and said, I was not aware of that. Naruto said, I had it bad but he has it worst. The K's cage actually brags about Gara because he is Suna's secret weapon so his seal is screwed up. The third said, why then do you want to have us ally with them? Naruto said, after his death things get better between us. If things are good then already then some things might change. The third said, I don't understand but I will trust you for now, so what do you plan? Naruto said, I need to train my body and learn more skills. Even with what I know I won't be ready for what is to come with my current knowledge. The third said, what is it you need then? Naruto thought and said, my chakra affinity is win. I know Cage Bunshin, Rasengan, Henge, Replacement, Summoning though I need to sign the Toad contract again. My Tiajutsu knowledge is good but my body can't handle what I know yet. Kenjutsu is something I want to work on. Maybe I can get a new chakra control exercise beside tree climbing and water walking. That's my best skills. The first time I came back and died at 7. Then I died at 9. Then I died at 12 Aegean because I made Orochimaru afraid of me. The third said. Well I might be able to get you a Kenjutsu teacher and a chakra control exorcist but it will take time. Naruto nodded and said, as Anko in the village. The third paled and said, what would you want with her? Naruto said, I want her to teach me her fighting style. I know all about her and Orochimaru's past. The third said, she is but I can't promise she will teach you. Naruto said, leave that to me. If you hear explosions from the forest of death don't think anything about it. The third said, why is that? Naruto said, I need to get her to train me so what's the best way to impress a sadistic bloodthirsty nympho? The third said, do I want to know? Naruto said, you make her submit. The third said, but you are only five. How can you make her submit? Naruto said, only physically and Kayubi can fix that. I am closer to 25 mentally. Also you don't train under Aerosanon for a total of 5 years and not learn a few things. The third said, I don't want to think about it. Naruto said, good. CYA. And started toward the door. The third said, don't you need some help? Naruto said, just work on getting the Kenjustu and the chakra control exercise for me. Work on Suna also. I will work on the rest myself for now and changed back to Asuma before walking out. The third sighed and said, I am getting too old for this shit. Asuma walked back in and said, oh, before I forget, do you know Cage Bunshin? The third nodded and Naruto said, enjoy the paperwork professor, and walked out. The third looked confused and asked, why would he need to know if I knew Cage Bunshin and told me? Damn it. And he hit his head on the table. He looked up and at the Hokage monument and said, you could have told me that's how you did it Arashi. Naruto chuckled as he left the tower and cut down an ally way still disguised as Asuma and started to release the henge only to be pulled into a kiss from a very good looking Kurenai. Naruto making the most of the situation returned the kiss and took control of it before breaking the kiss and saying, you know. For someone who was the genjutsu mistress of Konoha, you need to learn to detect a henge. And he started to walk away only to be pushed against a wall with a kuniya to his neck. Kurinai looked at him and said, Who are you two? Dot mph. She was stopped by having the position switched and having her lips engulfed into another passionate kiss. At first she tried to struggle but after a few moments she gave into the lust ang dropped the kuniya and closed her eyes enjoying the moment. Suddenly the presence left her lips and when she opened her eyes all she saw was Asuma smiling and he said, Age is not the only way to learn about love. Also, you don't have to always be afraid of being hurt. 
Enjoy your life since Heim, and was engulfed in a swirl of flames. Kurinai blinked and looked around trying to detect the person who was here a moment ago. Not detecting him anywhere she fixed herself and went to grab her kunia but saw it was gone so she left the ally way thinking about who and what that was. Anko was sitting on the wall of the forest of death eating a dango and was making a design of a snake with the sticks when she jumped to avoid a kunia. Anko landed and looked around and said, who are you? A chuckle from the fence said, a snake should always beware of a predator. Anko looked up and saw a man with blonde hair and about six foot tall standing on the fence. Anko said, who are you? The man chuckled and said, if you can catch me and make me submit I will tell you what you want. But I will also be hunting you, and he jumped into the forest. Anko looked around not sensing anyone else and jumped up and over the wall beginning to hunt. Naruto thought, Hugh, you better start pumping you chakra into me. This is going to talk a lot out of me. Kayubi said, what do you think I have been doing since we got back kit? Naruto thought, how come your voice is not all heavy and the demonic anymore? Kayubi said, my hatred is gone and with it so is the malice in my voice. Naruto was about to think something but jumped away to avoid a snake jumping out of the ground. Naruto snickered and said, you have to do better than that. Naruto felt a presence behind him and felt someone grab him and heard, what was that? Naruto smiled and said, boom, and exploded sending Anko into the air only for two more of the guys that attacked her to appear and kick her into each other like a pinball. Anko sent out a snake from her sleeve and destroyed one and turned to the other only to see her summon go up in a puff of smoke. The guy in front of her said, a snake should avoid a fox. Anko looked confused but the guy in front of her eyes turned red and then his nails drew longer and suddenly he charged and took a slash at her which she ducked but did not have time to react to miss the underswipe that cut the top of her shoulder and her coat and shirt. Anko looked at her wound and saw it was just a small cut and grabbed a little blood licking it to try and intimidate her opponent. The guy in front of her said, gotcha, and went up in a puff of smoke. Anko looked around and started to move but then she heard it. Doden. Yomi Numa, Earth Release, Underworld Swamp, and a swamp appeared under her and she tried to get out but was not able to because she saw the guy who attacked her was still channeling chakra into the attack and she was being drained of all of her chakra. She said, what do you want? Panting. Naruto said, I want you to train me to kill Orochimaru. Anko blinked and said, then why did you attack me? As she fell to her knees. Naruto still holding the jutsu said, I knew you would say no. I needed to impress you enough to do it. Unfortunately I guess my body is not strong enough yet to do it. And he released the jutsu and collapsed on the ground dropping the henge and turning back into his five year old self. Anko blinked and said, you got to be shitting me. A groan made her look down and saw the little blonde hair boy. The boy looked up and said, hello Anko. Anko looked at his face and saw the whiskers and said, so what was that about? Naruto said, like I said, I want to kill Orochimaru. To do that I need to know how he attacks. I know you were at one time his student so I figured with you hating him also I could get you to help train me. Anko looked at him and said, how do you know that kid? Naruto said, I am older than I look. I know a lot more than that. I also want you to know I can fix that. Pointing to the curse seal on her neck. Anko instinctively rubbed her neck and said, how can a little kid do what no one else can't? Naruto said, you know what I am. You also know what is inside me. I know how to use his chakra to heal my body and I also know that I can destroy level 1 curse seal as long as the person does not fight it. Anko looked in thought and Naruto said, if you want we can go to the Hokage's office to do it if you don't trust me. Anko seemed to think it over and said, what can you give me as proof? Naruto said, my life. Anko blinked and Naruto said, you can summon snakes. The asp can kill me if you attack my heart. Anko blinked and said, why do you want to kill Orochimaru so much? Naruto said, he plans to destroy the leaf. When he comes I plan to kill him. Anko seemed to think and said, how do you know what he is planning to do? Naruto said, I know a lot more than I should. My life made it where I had to. How old would you say I am? Anko said, I know you're five years old. Naruto snickered and said, it's good to be underestimated. 
Physically yes though Kurenai will probably kill me later for the kiss but mentally is another story. Anko said, that's a good story and all but why should I believe you? Naruto smiled and said, let's say I me and you were friends in a Pravio's life. Close friends that tell each other secrets about certain tattoos. Anko paled for a moment and said, that's a good one kid. Naruto said, hey it's not my fault you wanted to impress the guy you were in love with and had a tattoo of a viper put there. Too bad he's gay, it's was really well done. Anko looked pissed and said, give me one reason I should not kill you right now. I don't even know how you know about that. Naruto said, like I said, I know more than I should. I got two reasons why you should not kill me though. One you're turned on right now and two, you're tired of being alone. Hiding behind that mask and never truly opening up around someone. Afraid to be hurt Aegean. Anko looked at Naruto and said, what was that about Kurenai a moment ago? Naruto stood up and walked over to Anko and said, oh nothing much. She thought I was someone else and kissed me and I did this. And grabbed her hanging back into his tall blonde henge before engulfing her lips in a passionate kiss pressing her age on the tree she was by and holding her there as he broke the kiss and jumped back and said, see you at the Hokage office, before disappearing in a swirl of flames. The third was reading his book while he had two cage bun shins doing his paperwork when a swirl of flames appeared in his office. At first he thought he might be getting attacked until he saw Naruto. He blinked and Naruto held up his hand and started removing a finger starting with five. When he got to the last one a swirl of leaves appeared and Anko stood there looking like she was about to kill. The third said, I take it you found Anko. Naruto said, Yeep and I gave her an offer to remove her cursed seal. Walking over to the window only to duck under a kuniya that was thrown at him. Naruto turned and said, it was just one kiss. Anko said, I am going to skin you alive, and charged him only for him to duck under her swipe and grab her from behind bending her backwards so she was level with his true height and kiss her Aegean on the lips. She fought back for a moment before giving in and returning the kiss for a second before she opened her eyes wide and breaking the kiss as he stood her up. The reason she opened her eyes wide was cause he put his tongue in her mouth. The third sweat dropped and giggled at the same time. Naruto after standing her up walked over to a chair and said, So, do you want that seal removed or not? Anko looked at him trying to decide to kill him or let him try and then kill him. Naruto said in an impatient, Just show me the damn seal already. I have other things I got to do today besides convince you to teach me. I need to find Kakashi, steal his book to get him to teach me Miss Jutsu. Piss off the civilians, buy me some weapons. Everyone in the office looked at him sweat dropping. Anko blinked, the third blinked, the two clones blinked. Anko said, exactly who was this little shit? The third ingored her and said, how are you planning on buying weapons when you should not have any money? Naruto snickered and said, well I have three ways to do it. One I can go to my family estates and open the vaults. Second I could have you give me some money. Or three I could do this. Walking over to the picture of the Yandiame bit his thumb before putting it on the picture. The picture started to morph and change and then suddenly a safe appeared and it opened. Naruto put his hand in and pulled out a few scrolls looking at them, tossing one to the third and said, I got about a billion dollars here to play with. Anko looked at the third and said, did I wake up in another universe or something? I need a drink. Naruto said, wait till I remove the seal and I will join you. The third sighed and said, after you remove her seal will you leave me alone today? I feel like I need to retire or kill myself. Naruto said, you still have other things to work on remember. The third sighed and said, I think I liked you before. Naruto sighed and said, I guess I am a little high strung. Who wouldn't when you best friend and teammate tries to kill you? A man you try to stop from killing his family kills you. A man you respected as a grandfather being held down while his replacement kills you and then the man who first ruined your life kills you for trying to save the friend that would later kill you. I am tired old man. As he walks over and sits on the window seal looking at the Hokage mountain. Anko looked over at the third and he mouthed later. He looks at Naruto and said, try telling us about it and maybe we can help. Naruto sighs and said, I already told you about the deal Kayubi made with the Shinigami. When I came back the first time I tried to do it by myself. 
I thought if I could stop Itachi from killing the Uchiha clan his brother would not get fucked in the head and betray the village after Orochimaru offers him power. I learned then that I was not strong enough to stop him. The next time I came back I told you what happened and you tried to help me stop the Uchiha massacre. The council used it as leverage to have you removed and I tried to stop them saying it was not your fault. Danzo had his root members hold you down while he stabbed me through the heart. I came back Aegean and this time you had Jiraiya take me to train away from the village. We met Tsunade and she did a blood test when I got hurt. It was that blood test that showed we were related and how it came about. I returned for team placement and was placed on the same team again so I could save Sasuke when the time came. I also befriended Anko and Kurenai when it was shown Kakashi was playing favorites. It was then Anko and I started to date. Anko talked Kurenai into having fun with us because her and Asuma were having trouble. He he he. I have a habit of breaking the odds. I learned Rasengan in a month. I could turn the demon of the mist Zabuza into an ally. I can save a country. I could break the curse of Kyubi's spirit. I could be with two women at the same time and make both happy but I could not defend myself against S-class criminals. Naruto had tears in his eyes. He was still looking at the monument and said, I don't know how dad did it. To save a village by sacrificing his son. I guess that's the difference between us dad. You were willing to give everything to do it. Somehow I must do the same. I wish you were here to guide me dad. Starting over sucks but dying knowing you failed is even worse. The third said, Naruto, what is it you hope to do? Naruto sighed and said, my first life all I wanted was to be Hokage. To show the village I was not the demon they thought I was. For 12 years I did not know why they hated me. It took 12 years but I finally started making friends, it was one of the first I thought of as a friend that was my downfall. I thought if I could save him then I would not have to lose my friends Aegean and fail them. I then tried another way to save him by taking out the source of his betrayal Orochimaru. I don't know what to say or do anymore old man. I figured since I remember everything I learn I can get strong enough to stop him. Not to mention that damn group Itachi goes with. 9s class criminals after me so I need to be strong enough to stop them also. The third sat quiet for a moment and Anko said, why do you care for this friend of yours so much anyways? Naruto said, even though he acted like he hated me and called me an idiot and made fun of me all the time. Had the attention of everyone, he was also the first beside the old man here who actually accepted me somewhat. Anko said, so you want to save him for accepting you but he treated you like shit. Perhaps you are an idiot. If I was able to do what you claim you could I would learn everything I could and then I would start over and show all the idiots that you are actually better than them but hey, that's just me. Naruto looked at her and said, perhaps you're right. What do you think old man? The third thought for a moment and said, is there a limit to how many times you can come back? Naruto said, as long as I save one life each time no unless I give up this power. Why? The third was silent for a moment and said, how strong would you need to be to take out Orochimaru and those S-class criminals? Naruto thought for a moment and said, Orochimaru when he was with them was the weakest and he killed two cages in less than a month. I would need to be stronger than a cage. Anko said, what about with your demon chakra you used when fighting me? Naruto said, it's a double-edged sword. By the time I would have to fight Orochimaru I would only be able to use at most three tails worth of power. If he uses that damn five-star seal on me that option is useless Aegean. The third said, I have a plan that could work but it would take a lot of time. Fortunately that is something you have a lot of Naruto. I agree, there are events that must happen. The Uchiha clan is one of them so don't even worry about that. Also you must choose wisely who you tell. Instead of doing it like you did today when you come to me I want you to repeat this saying. Ready. Naruto nodded and the third said, a monkey will climb higher to avoid a snake. Even with a frog and a snail's help he may not climb fast enough. A fox can kill the snake but only with the strength of a snail, the agility of a frog and the wisdom of a monkey. Naruto thought for a moment and said, I get that one. Using the summons is a reference. What is your plan old man? The third thought for a moment and said, your plan for Suna is a good one but that is a bonus. Getting stronger would be wise and to be cage level you would have to be trained in everything. 
It could take a long time to do this. Do you understand this Naruto? Naruto nodded and said, So get stronger and strengthen the bonds between us and Suna. What else? The third thought for a moment and looked at Anko said, Well as luck would have it you also will have the dream of every man. Anko narrowed her eyes and said, What do you mean? The third chuckled and said, When you plan to make your move you will need to work on restoring your clan Kazama. Anko blinked and said, Kazama, as in. Naruto said, Yes, Arashi Kazama the Yandaimi was my father. Anko said, I thought you were losing your mind kid. Naruto sighed and said, So get multiple wives. What else? The third thought for a moment and said, Since you said the five star seal you must have had some run in with it so you need to learn sealing, Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu, Tiahutsu, Genjutsu, Strategy, Stealth, medical jutsu as well as other aspects of your life. You must learn to be a ladies man. Learn about each of the women you want to marry. Also you will need to leave this village and go to others to learn Thier village secrets. Find out who is Orochimaru's allies and also anything you can about them as well. Naruto said, Anywhere you think I should start first. The third thought and said, What is your worst? Naruto snickered and said, Genjutsu. The third thought and said, Okay good place to start. Naruto said, When do we begin? Anko said, What have we done? Naruto woke up in his bed and looked at the roof and said, I really hate those tiles, as he got ready for the day heading for the Hokage Tower. On his way he shoved a guy out of the way and quickly walked into the office not even hanging. A couple of guards tried to stop him along with the secretary. Not a good idea. Naruto placed a genjutsu on all three making them think they were in one of Jiraiya fantasies. When Naruto walked in the third looked up and said, Naruto, what can I do for you today? With a smile on his face. Naruto walked over and sat down putting his feet on the desk and said, I have something to say and then we can talk. A monkey will climb higher to avoid a snake. Even with a frog and a snail's help he may not climb fast enough. A fox can kill the snake but only with the strength of a snail, the agility of a frog and the wisdom of a monkey. The third blinked and said, Who are you? Naruto looked at the ceiling and said, Naruto Kazama. The third sat back in his seat and said, So tell me Naruto, what's going on? Naruto said, It's time to start action. I have lived more lifetimes than I care to count. If you added all my years together I would give the fox a good run for his money and age. I won't tell you why or how just know that you might want to let everyone know who I really am. Kyubi's dead though so don't feel bad about it. The third blinked and said, can I see the seal? Naruto snickered and raised his shirt saying, what seal? The third said, how strong are you? Naruto thought for a moment and said, more than enough for what I need to do. The third said, so what do you plan to do? Naruto said, how are things between Suna and Konoha? The third said, strained why? Naruto said, he has a daughter named Tamari. Arrange a marriage with her and the son of a cage. The third said, why would I do that? Naruto said, once the council finds out who I really am and my bloodline added to the fact Kyubi's dead they will jump at the chance to initiate the clan resurrection laws. The third thought for a moment and said, what bloodline? Naruto said, give me a moment and I will activate it and show you and closed his eyes and the third felt Naruto's chakra go up and after a moment died down. Naruto then started forming Han seals and walked to a plant on the side of the room and said, growth, and a plant suddenly grew three feet tall. Naruto turned and said, long story short dad is not the only cage blood I have. The third blinked and said, I think that this might be a good idea. But what do you plan to do? Naruto said, I don't want you to make it public knowledge who I really am yet. The third blinked and said, Why? Naruto said, I want to prove some stuff to people. I also need some others to underestimate me and those who think I am Kyubi to still hate me so when the time comes I can stop them. Until then I want you to keep it a secret. The third said, What exactly are you going to do? Naruto said, Train my body. The third said, what exactly does Orochimaru have to do with this Naruto? Naruto said, When the time gets closer my friend you will know. I can't tell you without screwing things up too much. Oh, keep everyone but Anko away from the forest of death, as he headed toward the door. 
The third said, Why Naruto? You got to give me something. Naruto said, I am going to live there. As for giving you something, how would you like to spend more time with your grandson? The third said, I would love to but. Naruto looked at him and said, Enjoy your life my old friend. Use kajbunshans to do paperwork and have a good life. I will try to stay out of your way and not cause trouble for you until it's time. The third said, Naruto, what do you plan to do? Naruto said, I will be training. The day my age group is supposed to take the finals for the genin test put me as a new student. I will be back then. It will look like I am gone until then. The third said, Naruto wait. I am sorry. Naruto smiled and said, I promise you my friend. When the time comes the years you protected me will be restored and I will save everyone I can. Just get that marriage to Tamari set up and don't tell them anything about me except I am the last of my clan with a bloodline. The third nodded and Naruto walked out. He quickly changed into Asuma and headed toward the alley only to be grabbed by Kurunai Aegean. Ten minutes later he left the ally and said, Till we meet Aegean beautiful Sensiheim. After that he was not to be seen by anyone for almost seven years. Time skip seven years. The Academy. Uruka sighed as he read the note the Hokage sent him this morning. Apparently a new student would be here for the finals today. He refused to tell the name but said he would be unique. He looked at his class and someone knocked on the door. He went to the door and said, Can I help? He stopped when he saw the figure standing there. The figure was nearly 5 feet 10 and 160 pounds. He had a pair of black pants on, a sword on his left side. A black vest unzipped except the very bottom with no shirt underneath. Blonde hair that was trimmed to where it was only about 2 inches tall and spiky. His eyes were blue but had a small red ring and slitted pupils. He had scrolls all over his vest as well as what looked like seals on his hands. He had a shuriken and two kuniya holsters on his legs. You could see his chest and it was what could be described as one word. Ripped. The figure said, yes. The Hokage said I was to take the test today. Uruka blinked and said, yes, what is your name? The figure smiled and said, Naruto. Uruka wrote that down and said, Naruto. Naruto said, Uzumaki. Uruka's sweat dropped and then paled dropping his pen before he said, right. Anyways find a seat. Naruto nodded and walked to the back of the class ignoring the looks he was getting. He sat down and Aruka said, Okay class. To become ninja you must pass this test to show you are ready. When I call your name please come to the other room to test. And so they started to take the test and then it finally came to Naruto's turn. Naruto walked into the room and the Mizuki said, Don't I know you from somewhere kid? Naruto looked at Mizuki who was away from Aruka and channeled chakra into his eyes and change color to red and then disappear returning to normal and said, I've been around, with a smile. Mizuki pointed his finger and Naruto said, so what's the test? Aruka saw Mizuki pointing but did not know why and said, do at least two bunshin. Naruto said, can it be any kind? Aruka said, sure. Naruto just nodded and five cage bun shin and Aruka blinked and said, you did not use hand seals. Naruto said, nope, and grabbed a headband before leaving to join the others. After he was gone Aruka said, what's wrong with you Mizuki? Mizuki said, it's the Kayubi brat. Aruka said, I know it's him but why are you freaking out? Mizuki said, I know what I saw, it's him, the Kayubi. Aruka sighed and said, I think you are crazy or something. I mean it's been 12 years and nobody has died and I am giving him the benefit of the doubt. Besides the Hokage knows he's here. Why else would he tell us he was arriving? Mizuki said, he was waiting to kill us. Now he's back and I am sure he is ready to do it. Uruka sighed and said, we can't do anything about it now. Let's go finish our job. Mizuki sighed and then followed Uruka to class. When they got there Uruka said, well done. All of you who pass come tomorrow to be assigned your team, and started to leave. Naruto waited until everyone left then he left as a swirl of flames. In the Hokage office the third was sitting looking at the people he chose to be senseis for this year's genin. Asuma, Kurunai, Kakashi. 
The third sighed and started to say something when a swirl of flames appeared in his office and everyone jumped back never seeing someone arrive like that and the figure standing there said, thanks old man for keeping the place going. I am back. The third chuckled and said, welcome back. It's been too long Naruto. Naruto looked at the ones there and said, you ready for the real fun to begin old man? We have less than six months before the village will be attacked. Everyone in the room tensed in the third side and said, so you ready to talk? Naruto sighed and said, it's good to see you all Eiji and Kakashi, Asuma, Karim. Everyone looked confused and Naruto went to the window and said, can you get Ibiki and Anko? When they get here I will tell everything. The third nodded and ordered the two to come. While they were waiting Kakashi said, how do you know who we are? Naruto said, Sharingan Hitaki Kakashi, Junin, student of Arashi Kazama. Said to have copied over 1000 jutsu. Only original jutsu that Chidori, hurts like a bitch, summons dogs. Asuma Saratobi, son of the third Hokage. Wind manipulator and one of the Firelord Temple Guards. Specialty trench knives and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yuhi Kuranai, Ice Queen of Konoha and a great kisser, Genjutsu Mistress. Favorite attack is the Treebind of Death. Age 20. Favorite color is blue and favorite flowers are jasmines. Has a birthmark on her right butt cheek. Previous relationship are with Asuma and Anton. Both ended but you still date Asuma every now and then when you get lonely but hate his smoking. Kuranai was bright red and Kakashi and Asuma both were giggling. Just then both Ibiki and Anko arrived and Naruto turned to them and said, Ibiki, head of interrogation and torture division of ABNU, specialty, mental torture. Brother Idate who went missing when he was tricked into stealing the Rajon by Awa. Current location, T country, Anko, apprentice of Orochimaru, summon snakes, has a cursed seal of earth on her neck. Makes everyone thinks she has a blood fetish but it's a self-defense to intimidate people. Also a great kisser. Has a tattoo that no one besides her and the person who put it on has seen. It is actually a really well done one. And he dodges a kuniya. The third chuckled and Anko said, Okay kid, I don't know who you are and how you know this stuff about us but you are going to tell us now or I will kill you myself. Naruto chuckled and said, I am sure all of you have basically the same thought in your mind. Don't worry I will tell you now. Old man, this is for only those in this room, got it. The third nodded and said, as some of you might be able to guess by the marks on my face I am Naruto Uzumaki but actually that's not right, is it old man? The third sighed and said, no. Naruto said, Kakashi, you more than anyone in this village should have been able to tell who I really was. Kakashi said, why is that Naruto? Naruto said, I am hurt. You would think my own godfather would know me. Kakashi blinked and looked at Naruto for a moment and then his eye got as big as a silver dollar and he looked at the third and said, you told me he was dead. This got everyone's attention. Asuma said, what are you talking about? Naruto said, look at the picture behind you Asuma. Everyone turned and looked at the picture and then back at Naruto. Ibiki chuckled and then laughed hard and said, are you saying that? Naruto said, Kazama, Naruto Kazama. As everyone got it they gasped in disbelief. Naruto said, okay, now that the minor stuff is out of the way we have a war to prepare for. Old man, did you get Suna like I asked? The third nodded and said, yes, it costed us some but I got her for you. I still don't know why though. Naruto said, as you all know the Chunin exams will be held in Konoha this year. During the exams as long as I have not changed things too much but with not stopping the Uchiha massacre and my disappearance seven years ago everything is pretty much the same. During the exams Orochimaru himself will infiltrate the village and attack Team 7 under Kakashi and give Uchiha Sasuke a cursed seal of heaven. When the finals of the exam arrive the sound village which Orochimaru is the Odokage of will attack. Originally it was with the help of Suna. If I did not stop the case cage's son Gara, we would have lost that battle. Ibiki said, how do you know all of this and how come you talk in the past tense? Naruto said, originally at the end of the battle the third was dead. Jiraiya who trained me after Kakashi abandoned me to a less than adequate teacher took me as his apprentice and we went and found my grandmother Tsunade to come back to be the Gondiame Hokage. Everyone paled and Naruto walked to a plant and said, 
I see you replaced the last one. And went through some seals and said, Growth. And the plant jumped three feet in height. Naruto turned around and said, Anyways. With Sasuke already being borderline insane because of his brother, compounded by the fact of the curse seal and Itachi coming to the village to kidnap me for the Kyubi he betray the village and left with Orochimaru personal bodyguards. Kakash, I don't care if it kills me and I have to start over Aegean. You teach that little asshole Chidori Aegean I will shove a food and race shuriken up you ass. Asuma said, what is that attack? Naruto said, the final form of a Rasengan. Kakashi fell to the ground and said, impossible. Naruto said, not for me. It's a Rasengan with wind manipulation added to it. Anyways long story short Sasuke killed me with Chidori. Shinigami came to take me but because Kayubi had not been in my body long enough he would have been back in 20 years. Kakashi said, but the seal. Naruto stopped him and said, was designed to give me all of Kayubi's power over my lifetime. If the villagers would have killed me the day of the sealing Kayubi would have been back in less than a year. You're lucky the old man here was so adamant about keeping me alive. Anyways when the Shinigami came to take me Kayubi made a deal. A side effect of the seal was he felt everything I felt so all the sadness and loneliness changed him. Kayubi's deal was to give his powers to me and. Naruto stopped and hanged into a ABNU and the doors to the Hokage office opened and Mizuki came barging in. He said, Hokage, what's the idea of having that demon come into the academy and graduating? I am sure he is, he never got to finish as Kakashi hit him in the neck and Ibiki had him taken away. When the door closed and everyone settled down Naruto changed back and said, sorry, could not let that traitor see me here right now. By the way Ibiki, you might have a BNU keep an eye on him. I know originally he had me do it but since I passed he may use someone else but he's after the forbidden scroll. Orochimaru promised him power. You know when his teammates suddenly died under mysterious circumstances. He was trying to impress the Hebatem at the time. Ow oh well where was I? Now I remember. Kayubi gave me his powers, and the Shinigami gave me the power of the Phoenix of Legends. Every time I die I am reborn to a day when I was five years old and remember everything that happens. I have had a lot of lives learning. Here in this village and others. The third said, if what you said is true Naruto then we have to. He stopped because of a massive amount of ki. Naruto said, that is why I did not tell you earlier old man. If we start preparing then Orochimaru's spies will find out and tell him. He has several in this village. Even with all my lives I still have not gotten to know all of them. The only course of actions is to set up for certain aspects. He has spies on the council, hospital, this administrative building, the academy, ABNU, hell I know Root has alliances with them but it's next to impossible to prove. Danzo is someone I would love to kill. Anyways I am sure you all have questions so I will try to answer. Anko said, how do you know so much personal stuff about me? Naruto said, after the first few times of screwing up trying to stop the Uchiha massacre and Orochimaru without much skills the third of a timeline asked me what I wanted to accomplish as a goal. I told my goal at the time and the you of the time because I wanted you to train me in the serpent style told me I should work toward a life that would make me happy. After I found out who my family is and was the third said after I stopped Orochimaru and some others that I would have to revive my clan with multiple wives. He said a side mission should be getting to know the real women who I might someday like to have in my life. One of my lives I helped you and Karim emotionally and we dated some. Asuma said, sound like more than dated. Naruto said, relax, I may know details of both the lovely ladies here but I have never been past kissing. I refuse to go past that point until I actually get married. The reason I know about those embering details is you should not drink with someone who can't get drunk. Kurinai said, so you know about my birthmark because I got drunk and told you about it. Naruto said, actually no, you got drunk after Asuma was killed and you went into labor and I had to deliver it. That's how I know about your birthmark. Anko said, what about me? Naruto shivered and said, I know things about you that would make Orochimaru blush if he could and was not gay. The answer to is you wanted to kill me for stealing your dango and I learned a new variation of the hidden snake dance. Anko said, really, Naruto said, all I will tell you is that it involved ten snakes, 
a pair of white panties and dying with a smile on my face. Anko said, I don't own white panties. Naruto said, whoever said it was your panties. You tied me upside down with your snakes in the female ABNU dressing room butt ass naked and made me watch you and another woman change for 9 hours. I had so many nosebleeds in that room that my regenerative abilities finally gave out and died from blood loss. Kakashi said, amateur. Naruto did a sign and said, harem jutsu. And 20 naked blonde women appeared sending Asuma, the third, Ibiki, and Kakashi flying backwards. Naruto then said, at least I did it from a real woman. I also don't need my grandfather's books to dream about a woman either. Naruto looked at the two women and suddenly realized that was not the best move. The only thing keeping them from killing him was the other men. Anko smiled evilly and Kurenai said, So, you think that you could make us some of your wife's huh? Naruto changed into Asuma and said, Sure Sensiheim, and changed back. Kurenai stopped in her tracks and stared blankly and said, that was you. Naruto said, you should check for a henge before grabbing guys in ally ways. Anko looked at the two and said, what's he talking about Kurenai? Naruto flames shushin across the room. Anko blinked and said, no, fucking, way. Kurenai blinked and said, what? Anko said, you remember me talking about the guy in the forest of death. Naruto said, I wish they would change the name of that place. I have lived there for seven years and I am still alive. Kurenai blinked and said, You meant to tell me the guy who tricked you into a game of cat and mouse and then had you at his mercy and only kissed you before leaving was him. Naruto smiled and said, I learned to make the women I care and respect happy. A groan from Ibiki alerted them to all the guys waking up. After everyone was awake the third said, Naruto. I am classifying that as an S rank jutsu. Naruto said, A rank. Sexy jutsu is a B rank. Harem jutsu is an A rank. Orgy is an S rank jutsu. Anko said, What's the difference? Naruto said, Sexy jutsu is just myself changing. The funny thing about it is thanks to Kayubi I really do become female. Oh well. Harem jutsu is with clones. Orgy is a version where you have the females and also males going at it. The only people who I have ever encounter immune to it are Sasuke and Orochimaru but since they are gay it does not matter. Kurenai said, those jutsu are degrading to women. Naruto said, I have you know that they are no different from the advanced female ninja classes the unmarried older ninja have to take. As a matter of fact I had those classes and have broke up several prostitution rings with them thank you. Kurenai blinked and gaped trying to have a comeback. Ibiki said, can you tell us anything we can prepare for? Naruto thought and said, a genin named Kabuto. He has failed the last six exams but he actually stronger than Kakashi. He is Orochimaru right hand man. Secretly track his movements without alerting him. His detection skills are better than mine and mine are better than an Inazaka. He also has an advanced healing ability equal to my demon one. Speaking of demons, just so all of you know I do have his powers and but he is gone along with the seal. The last time I checked old man I can hold up to four tails of demon chakra for 20 minutes before my body starts to destroy itself. Any longer and I suffer from chakra exhaustion and severe damage to my body. If I go any more tails worth then that I suffer the same fate and also I only have instincts then. I've sealed the rest away for now. It will probably take me eight years to get to the last tail of chakra though. Kakashi said, how strong are you Naruto? Naruto said, with or without all the restriction I have on. Asuma said, explain. Naruto said, I have gravity seals, chakra seals, physical weights, chakra weights, the sword on my side has about one tail's worth of chakra sealed in it that I can draw in battle if I need to. Everyone paled and the third said, how strong are you with the restriction? Naruto said, I could take on Jiraiya and win. Everyone paled even more and Kakashi said, without. Naruto said with a straight face and no emotions, the entire leaf village and win without using Horishin no Jutsu. The third finally regained his color after a few moments and said, how many Jutsu do you know Naruto? Naruto closed his eyes and said, 2000 Kaden, 1300 Raiden, 900 Doden, 5000 Sweden, 1200 Fudan, 600 Medical and 400 Kinjutsu. 
not including the 40 styles of Chiahutsu and the 25 Kenjutsu styles I know. I can open all 9 of the gates also. If this chance fails when I go on the mission to Snow Country I might go to the hidden village there and learn some snow and ice jutsu. I have master my wind affinity as well as my Sweden and Doden affinity. Until I had activated my bloodline I was limited to wind only. I know and can use Kaden and Raiden jutsu but they eat my chakra bad. Kakashi said, 9, but there are only 8 gates. Naruto said, in normal people yes. I was once a demon vessel so all the demon chakra I have in my body comes through the ninth gate. If I use it I have unlimited chakra. However I would destroy my body in a few minutes as I can't shut it off fast enough to save my life. Kurinai said, How's your genjutsu skills? Naruto said, I can use 10 genjutsu. No matter how much I try that is my true weakness. I can detect them as long as they are not super weak ones. I can't cancel them by stopping my chakra. I can stop them with pain or using powering up chakra. Only problem is if I pulse my chakra I will cancel all genjutsu in a one mile radius, both ally and enemy. At least I can fight Itachi's Sharingan now. Kakashi said, what do you mean? Naruto said, you know how he has the last level and how you have to kill your best friend to get it. When Kayubi was teaching me to use his chakra he taught me to manipulate my body with his chakra. Having been hit with that damn genjutsu of the Sharingans enough times I can fight him in it so instead of him controlling everything that happens in it we fight for dominance. Sadly of the last 20 times we fought in it I only beat him 5 times. Maybe this will be 6. The third was rubbing his temple and said, Okay, so what are you planning on doing? It obvious you are Sanin and probably cage level. Naruto said, What I am going to do is advance in the ranks normal. Get some friends. Try to save everyone I care about. Kill Orochimaru. Stop 9s class criminals. Save 5 countries and settle down and have a family. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy. Naruto said, What? I will save Wave Country, Snow Country, Tea Country, Ricefield Country, and Waterfall. As for the 9s class criminals, they will come after me just like they will come after Gara. They want to rule the world by using the tailed demons. Fear plan has failed now since I don't have Kyubi but that can still cause a hell of a lot of damage with just 8 of them. If it was not for Orochimaru's immortality just you he would be a pussy. Ibiki said, immortality just you. Naruto sighed and said, that's why he is coming here besides destroying the leaf village and killing the third. He wants Sasuke because he has created a bastardized version of the Heavily power I was granted except instead of going back in time he goes into another body that he controls. With the help of the curse seal and drugs he puts in the bodies he could give me a run for the money for a while. If he gets Sasuke before Sasuke gets strong enough to fight it he will be near impossible to stop. Kakashi said, then why don't we just train Sasuke to be stronger? Naruto said, it's not physical energy I am talking about. Sasuke with the help of the Sharingan in some of my lives was able to take over Orochimaru's soul but only when Orochimaru waited till Sasuke was over 16 years old. If he takes it over before then he succeeds. I don't know all the details so I can't help you. The only options are a stop Orochimaru during the exams. B. Kill Sasuke. C. Kill Orochimaru before he changes and destroy his entire body or some of his followers know how to implant his soul into Thier bodies even after he is dead. D. Kill them both. Thier is no middle ground. Sasuke will betray this village for power. He won't be happy with getting stronger either. He wants power handed to him on a silver platter and will go to anyone who offers it to him. He has betrayed us to Iwa, Cloud, Rain, Sound. Hell he even betrayed us for the S-class criminals his brother is a member of if they agreed to train him to kill Itachi. He will never stay in Konoha. He is treated as a god here and wants more. You know the old saying absolute power corrupts absolutely. They were talking about Sasuke. Naruto sighed and giggled after a moment. Kurinai said, what's so funny? Naruto said, I just remembered. Danzo revolted in one of my lives and held Tsunade who was the cage as a prisoner by holding her assistant Shizune hostage, he forced her to have me banished from Konoha for breaking Sasuke Pinky when we brought him back to Konoha once. Five of our ninja died, 27 wounded and because I broke his pinky when I threw him on the ground on the council chamber's floor they had me banished. Ironic. 
I wonder how much those assholes are going to ruin this life. Anko said. Sounds like you got everything planned out. What's with the Suna thing? Naruto sighed and said. Like I told you originally Suna joined Sound in attacking us. Suna did not know about me and Jeriaya teaching me to summon Gambunta and the power of Kyubi. If they had they would have had Gara kill me quickly. Ibiki said. You mentioned him a lot. Exactly who is he? Naruto said. A living weapon, or at least that's what his father wanted when he did it. The third said. What are you talking about Nordo? Naruto said. You all know how I was used for honorable reasons to save the village right. Gara was not as lucky. One of the council somehow got an urn that had the, the soul of a crazy monk and the one-tailed sand demon Shukaku sealed in it. The case cage had the demon and monk sealed into Gara while he was still in his mother's womb. When she gave birth to Gara, it killed her. Unlike me who was somewhat hidden from the kids here. The case cage had made it common knowledge what Gara was. The sand's personal weapon. Sadly living nearly 12 years with maybe a day of sleep in your life does not make you a good person. His mission was to kill Sasuke and then destroy the leaf when they attacked. Sasuke wounded him with the Chidori but all it really did was piss him off. I was able to beat him outside of the village but Sasuke was given credit. Who wants to see the plague of the village as a hero? The third thought for a moment and said, Then why did you want the arranged marriage to strengthen ties between us? Naruto said, Orochimaru will kill the case cage. One way or another and impersonate him here during the finals. It's too much of a convenience to be by you during the attack. After everything calms down and Gara loosing to me he becomes the new case cage of the sand. I am one of the only people he would ever trust after that. Tamari is his older sister and she is one of three people he cares truly about. Konkuro his brother and me are the others. I plan to fix Gara's seal when I see him to get rid of Shukaku influence on him. That will make him more friendly with me and with Tamari being engaged to me he will respect the leaf since I am from the leaf. Tamari is also a nice woman and the only people who would date her are either trying to suck up to Gara or just want to use her. I actually care for her and want to see her happy. The only other guy to ever be halfway decent to her in all of my lives was Shikamaru but they have a love-hate relationship and after she got pregnant he left her. I would not do that to her so that why I was willing to do this. I would have tried it even without the politics. Everyone seemed to accept his answer and the third said, so what do you want to do? Naruto said, team placements are the same always as they would have been. Kakashi has Sasuke Sakura and me. Kurinai has Kiba. Shino, and Hinata. Oh and Karim, Hinata is a fragile egg. You will try to baby her but actually letting Anko train her a little will bring her out of her shell. Just a thought, the last team will be the next Anoshikacho group under Asuma. If you can work with your teams on speed and endurance to prepare them for the war. That in Chakra would be all the training I suggest to help them be stronger. The rest is up to you. As far a mission. I only really know about Team 7S mission under Kakashi. Give us whatever you feel like old man until AC rank mission to wave comes in. When it does I request that mission. I might be able to get us too strong ninja to help. The third said, and who would these two be? Naruto smiled and said, the demon of the mist Zabuza and his assistant Haku who also has a bloodline. The third said, I agree to the mission but I won't agree to the missing nin until I speak to them. I will give them free leave though. Naruto said, that's all I ask. Before I forget, don't call me Kazama in public. I don't want the wrong people to know until it's time. Right now word should be spreading around town the demon is back. It really won't affect me much. One of the genjutsu I know allows me to do my shopping and stuff. Also I will not show my true skills Kakashi. I will use simple henge, replacement, Cage bunshin since I can't do regular bunshins, tree climbing and water walking. Well it's getting late and I have a novel to finish reading so I need to head home. Kakashi said, Naruto wait, where do you live? Naruto smiled and said, oh, the forest of death. I built me a home there. The only ones who actually go there without being order are Anko and the old man. CYA. And disappeared in a swirl of flames. Kakashi said, He's joking right and what is with that shushin? The third said, actually number. When he came to me at the age of five and told me about coming back he asked me to keep everyone but Anko out of there. 
He really does live there. As for the Shushan, I don't know. Anko said. I just got a new hobby. Kurinai said. What's that? Anko said. He has lived there for seven years and I only encountered him one time in all those years. I am going to find him in his home. The third said. I can help a little. I know it's not in the south quadrant. I checked it myself looking for him after the Uchiha massacre. Anko said. I also know he's not in the east quadrant also. That means I have 10 square miles to look for him in. Kurinai said. When you find it let me know. I want to see it. With an evil look in her eye. Asuma leaned over and said. I have not seen that look for seven years now since she came and asked me about calling her Sensiheim. Ibiki said. Well I got some avenue to order around. I got the feeling I am going to have some people to have fun. I mean torture soon. As he left, Kakashi looked at the third and said, is he really related to the Sanins? The third said, truthfully, I don't know but with that bloodline I say it's a good chance he's related to one of them. Kakashi nodded and said, I am going to have fun with this team, before leaving in a swirl of leaves. Asuma said, you know when Tsunade finds out about him if she is related to her you're dead right. The third said, at least thanks to Naruto the last seven years have been good. Asuma looked confused and said, what do you mean? The third chuckled and said, he told me how to do all my paperwork in a fraction of the time. Asuma said, really, how? The third said, kujbunshin. Asuma face faulted and after picking himself up said, that's so simple I wonder how you never thought of that before. The third said, rub it in why don't you? Asuma laughed and left. The third sighed and said, so what do you both want? Kurinai said, answers. The third sighed and said, I am getting too old for this shit. Very well, I will answer what I can. Both women nodded and so into the night the interrogation went. In the forest of death assertion blonde sneezed every few moments. The next day at the academy everyone was sitting in class waiting on Aruka to come in. Each person was doing their own thing. Some were interested in others. Most of the fangirls in class were busy looking at two people. Sasuke and Naruto. Sasuke because he is the last Uchiha and Naruto because he is a mystery and had the whole badass swordsman look about himself. It helped the fact that he was a badass swordsman but no one actually knew that. Today his look is different than before. Today he had a black pants and his sword and a black vest unbuttoned with a no shirt underneath but a blue sash around his waist to cover where the seal was supposed to be. He had a black wrist guard on each hand and the seals were still on each hand. Think Bon from Final Fantasy XII. Sasuke was looking at Naruto from the corner of his eye every time his fangirls looked away for a second. I would go into his thoughts but since they are a broken record I will only play them once. I must get stronger to kill him. I am an Avenger, no one is better than an Uchiha, I bet he is weak, cute ass. Okay I need to stop there. Sasuke mental thoughts on Naruto are disturbing after that. Naruto was sitting in the back of the class and was eyeing each of the rookie nine. They did not know it though. Why you ask? He had on a pair of black pilot style sunglasses. If you looked at his eyes all you could see was your reflection which made his new fan club think he was looking at him. Naruto was mentally evaluating each of his friend. Shikamaru genius, lazy, family style jutsu, weak tiahutsu. Choji powerhouse, food expert, family jutsu, weak genjutsu. Ino fangirl, family jutsu, weak nin and taijutsu. Nice body, lousy kisser, bisexual. Shino genius, family jutsu, weak tiahutsu. Hanada bloodline, low self esteem, family jutsu, weak ninjutsu. Controllative possessive disorder, want to control all life, kinky. Kiba Haiden sense, family jutsu, weak genjutsu. Sakura fangirl weak nin and tiahutsu, multiple personality, great medical if trained, sucks in relationship. Killed myself after I kissed her and saw her naked, could not even touch her. What the hell did I ever see in her anyways? Sasuke traitor must die. Psycho, weak in sealess jutsu and other bloodlines. Weak Genjutsu Sharingan cancels them so if he has them on useless. Naruto sighed and thought, may have dated those three but never slept with them, thank god. Ino wants a guy who is also bisexual, and is willing to show whole body to get a guy. 
Hanada wants to chain you up and control everything. She actually tried to tell me when to go to the bathroom. Sakura, it is actually a good thing she has a big forehead. If anyone would have thought to look they would have seen the genjutsu on her body. Her breast never developed and puberty hit her hard elsewhere. To have a monthly twice a month. No wonder she is always in a bad mood. Mentally if I dated any of them Aegean I would kill myself. Anko was right about me getting to know the women I would like to maybe spend my life with. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts by Ino who had walked over and said, Hi, I am Ino. Naruto thought of something and said, Ino, even though I just met you I bet you I can tell you almost everything about you. If I can would you do me one request? Ino was blushing and said, Anything. Naruto said, You work in a flower shop love lilacs, like Sasuke but you also like girls, want to find a guy who would also like girls and guys and hopes to embarrass your parents by changing you family business into a Ika Ika store and has the entire collection in you closet under the floorboards. Am I right on most of it? Everyone in the class was looking at them and Ino was red with embarrassment. Naruto decided to cut her some slack and said, If I am right on at least one thing then I also know things about others like that. If so I have a list for you that you should use to find a true soul mate. My request is that you go down this list and date all five names at least once and make it a real date, you can't say no to dating them based on age, weight, or looks, and you cannot say the name Sasuke once on them or compare the date to Sasuke. Deal, I promise you that one of these is your soulmate, holding out a list folded over. Ino looked at it and then at Naruto and then the list and then at Sasuke and said, Deal. Grabbing the list. Naruto grabbed her arm and said, Remember you have to give each person a real chance. I will know if you don't and since I can guarantee I will be on a team with Sasuke I will tell him on you if you break your word. If you really like him then you don't want him thinking you're a liar and released her making her walk over and sit down. Shikamaru said, that was troublesome. You set her in a perfect trap and never met her before. I bet you even set her up with the biggest losers there are. It's so troublesome. Ino walked over and said in a stuttering voice, Shikamaru, I was wondering, would you go with me tonight on a date? Shikamaru's eyes got as big as a silver dollar and then returned to being lazy and he looked at Naruto and said, I would hate you but it is too troublesome to actually think of getting revenge. Yes Ino I will, pick you up at 6. Sakura had her mouth hanging open and said, take that in a pig, love concurs all. A vein appeared on Naruto's head and said, quit trying to make yourself look good Sakura. Inner Sakura will hound you if you about not having a date later. Ino looked at Naruto wondering what he meant. Sakura was pale and sat down leaving everyone to wonder what he was talking about. Naruto sighed and said, Hey Kiba, do me a favor. Kiba looked at him and said, Why should I do you a favor and how do you know our names and so much about Ino? Naruto said, Simple actually, I heard all of your names yesterday during the testing, I know so much about Ino because I heard her family business in town, as for anything else I know about her that may or may not be true as I can read people like a book. As for why you should do me a favor, I will owe you one later. After all, only thing I was going to ask you to do was deliver a scroll to your team sensei. I was told to give it to her on my way here but I was too busy. Shikamaru said, how do you know what teams we are going to be on and who our senseis are? Naruto said, information gathering is important for a ninja, but truthfully I saw the list earlier when I was at the Hokage's office finalizing my ninja status and getting my picture taken for the records. Shikamaru said, troublesome. I thought I was the only one who saw that list. Kiba said, Fine, I will deliver this scroll for you. Who was it from anyways? Naruto said, All I remember about the guy was his last name started with a K. He said it was an apology for something and he did not know if he would get a chance to tell her face to face, and did not want to have hard feelings if he did not see her Aegean. Kiba said, Alright, I want to call in that favor now anyways. Naruto said, all right, Kiba said, since we know nothing about you tell us about yourself. Naruto said, fair enough. My name is Naruto, I am the same age as all of you, I am a sealmaster and have lived and trained on the outside of Konoha since I was five years old. I am engaged to one woman though I have not met her yet and I am one of the last of my clan. Shikamaru said, 
I never heard of a clan called Uzumaki before. Naruto said, that is not my real name. It was changed to protect me until I was strong enough to claim my real name. I will not tell you what it is no but I will tell you it is one of the founding clans of Konoha. Well Uruka's here so let's meet our teams. Favors filled Kiba, thanks, and leaned back propping his feet up on the desk and waited. Uruka walked in and said, okay, I want to congratulate all of you. Naruto raised his hand and Uruka said, yes, what is it Naruto? Naruto said, where is Mizuki Sensei, I was sure he would be here today. Uruka said, Mizuki is no longer with us. He was caught breaking into the Hokage's office last night. Apparently he was going to defect from the village. Naruto smirked to himself at that. Uruka sighed and said, as I was saying, the life of a ninja is not an easy one. You will face many trials and some of you may not be ready for what is to come. Anyways good luck the teams are as follow. Team 7 Sasuke, Sakura, and Sakura jumped up to say something but was stopped. Naruto said, Sakura stop insulting others. We need to work on our teamwork. Sakura shot him a glare and said, I bet we are not even on the same team. Naruto said, Team 7 Sasuke, Sakura and me under Sharingan Kakashi, Team 8 is Kiba, Shino and Hinata under Genjutsu Mistress Kurenai, Team 10 is Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji under Knight of the Fire Lord Asuma. Am I right Uruka Sensei? Uruka looked at the list and said, Yes but how? Naruto said, Like I told everyone earlier, I saw the list when I was getting my ninja status finalized and had my picture taken. Uruka said, Yes well I may not like the fact that Naruto and Sakura interrupted me but Naruto did finish my duties for me and also Sakura, I would have to say he also had a good point. You do need teamwork so don't insult others who might be on your team. Well one last time I would like to say good luck. Your senses will be here shortly. Uruka turned to leave but Naruto yelled, Uruka, I have something for you. And tossed a scroll which Uruka caught and he said, what is it? Naruto said, I noticed when I was walking through the village last night that you had a bunch of paperwork needing to be filled out. That's a jutsu that helps with paperwork. It has other things it can do but read the whole description and you will understand. Uruka nodded and opened it and read it with a big smile on his face and said, that will save me a lot of time on paperwork. Thanks Naruto. Where did you learn it? Naruto said, I got it from one of my father's scrolls he left me and though it takes a lot of chakra it will at least cut your paperwork time in half. Leaf ninja have to look out for one another. Right, if we did not then we would be no better than monsters and demons. After all, being kind is part of being human. Uruka paled for a second then smiled and said, I was right Naruto, you are a good person. Thanks. And walked out the room. Sasuke said, what was that jutsu you gave him? Dobi. Naruto said, I am not a Dobi, I am equal in status as you and anyone else in this room. We are all leaf ninja now. All equal in ranks as Genin. It does not matter what clan we are or who we are related to or what our last name is. In both battle and everyday life we need to look out for each other. We are family in that sense. As for what jutsu that is it's kajbunshin. Shikamaru said, you do know that's a junin technique right? Naruto said, yes I know but it's only that because of the chakra you need to use it. If you used it unwisely it could kill you. However just making one or two and not using it in battle should be safe for a chunin and each time he uses it will make it easier the next time. Sasuke said, I don't need help. I am stronger than all of you anyways. Naruto said, then if me and anyone in this room got together you could defeat us. Sasuke said, easily. Naruto said, who do you think is the weakest person here Sasuke? Sasuke said, probably you. Naruto said, pick someone to team up with me and I bet we could be you in less than a minute. Sasuke smirked and said, Choji. Naruto smirked and said, who has a watch? Kiba said, I do. Naruto said, you time us and tell us to begin. Choji come here. Choji got up and came to Naruto and Naruto said, relax, we can beat him easily with teamwork. I want you to take a kuniya and charge him. Don't worry about hitting him or anything. I will do the rest. Teamwork is the key to victory. Choji just nodded and looked at Kiba and said, ready. 
Naruto also just shook his head and Sasuke got into a fighting stance and said, Bring it. Kiba said, Begin. And Choji pulled out a kuniya and charged Sasuke. Sasuke smirked and started to form hand seals only for something to grab his leg. He tried to move but could not and had to pull out a kuniya to block Choji's strike. He was still not able to move his legs or see what was holding him while defending himself. Suddenly he felt a kuniya on his neck. Naruto said, time. Kiba looked at the watch and said, 29 seconds. Naruto said, good job Choji. Teamwork can almost always stop a single enemy, and started to walk toward his seat. Sasuke looked down and did not see anything holding him and said, how did you hold me in place? Naruto said, I had a Kajbunshin hold you and since you could not stop defending against Choji to look and destroy the Kajbunshin I simply walked around you and applied the finish to end the match. Sakura said, you used ninjutsu to beat him. That's cheating. Naruto said, we are ninja Sakura, we use everything we can to win. As for using ninjutsu what do you think the hand seals he was doing would have been? An enemy will not always allow you to form hand seals so you have to know other things to win. If you notice I never used a hand sign. It's not because it's a sealess jutsu. It's because I have mastered it to a point where I don't need the seals. Look underneath the underneath Sakura. If that would have been an actual battle Sasuke would be dead and we would have cut his eyes out and sold them to another village. Everyone was stunned and Sakura said, you would do that. Naruto said, if I was an enemy then yes. You can ask Hanada up there about it. The Cloud Village already tried to do that when she was four years old. An enemy does not care who you are or where you were in the class whether you were the rookie of the year or the dead last. All they care about is killing you and completing their mission to get paid. All any of our lives is worth is how much someone is willing to pay to kill us. Remember that. And he sat down. Clapping could be heard and everyone turned and saw a woman with red eyes and a man smoking a cigarette and the man said, he's right about everything he said. My name is Asuma and this is Kuranai. Team 8 and 10 come on. And he started to leave. Both teams got up to leave and Naruto said, Kiba, don't forget the favor. Kiba said, I want but we are going to have to spar sometime. Naruto said, sure, good luck. As they walked out. Finally it was only Team 7. Naruto sighed and created 10 cage bunshin and had them start running up and down the walls. Sakura and Sasuke saw this and were in awe. Sakura said, Why and how are you doing that Naruto? Naruto said, Anything a Kajbunshin learns so does the original when dispelled. Kakashi is always late so I decided to do some chakra control exorcis. This one is based on tree climbing. Sasuke said, Everyone knows how to climb trees dobi. Sakura said, I already have perfect chakra control. Naruto threw two kuniyas into the wall and walked up the wall and walked around the two kuniyas and started standing on them with his index finger while he was doing push-ups with his legs in an Indian style upside down. The two sweat dropped as he did this with his eyes closed. Sasuke began brooding and Sakura tried to get him to give her a date. He ignored her and she would shoot glances at Naruto who was still doing his exorcis. Meanwhile Kiba was following his team and team 10 out of the building when he said, Kuranai Sensei. I was asked to give this to you. Holding up the scroll. Everyone stopped and Kuranai got it and said, What is this Kiba? Kiba said, I really don't know myself. Naruto said he was asked to give that to you from someone who had the last name starting with K and it was an apology or something. He said he saw where our teams were divided up and asked me to deliver it since he did not think he would be able to. Kuranai shot a look at Asuma who just shrugged his shoulders. Kuranai sighed and opened the scroll and when she did a box of chocolates and two dozen jasmines with a blue fox holding a card. Kuranai blushed and opened the card and read it. Sensiheim, I wish to apologize for embarrassing you in the Hokage's office last night. Even though I may have had a life with you before it is not always the same. Each event in life depicts who and what we are. I may only know you a day of one hundreds of lifetimes but I will never know everything about you. I am sorry if I overstepped my bounds and I hope we can still have a relationship. Whether it is as co-workers, friends or whatever I will respect you wishes. Sincerely yours Kazama, Kuranai blushed as she read it and smelled the flowers and said, Kiba, 
Thank you for delivering this for me and I will also thank Naruto when I get a chance. We have other things to worry about now. Asuma said, from your friend from last night. Kurinai nodded and said, yes, I must thank him personally. Asuma nodded and said, Anko figure out where he lives yet. Kurinai said, you heard any explosions yet? Asuma said, I take that as a no. Maybe I should talk to him. Kurinai said, you will do no such thing. Asuma said, but, what about us? Kurinai said, right now there is no us, and there is no me in him either. I am not saying there won't be but I want to know him some first. Jealousy does not suit you Asuma. Asuma said, he is what eight years younger than him. Kurinai said, I am four years younger than you and I am old enough to make a decision about this myself. Besides, age does not really count in his case. Besides, his eyes are my favorite color. Asuma sighed and said, I guess you're right. Just promise me to take it slowly. Kurinai said, Asuma, I did not know you cared. Asuma said, Women, can't live with them and can't take a kuniya away from them. Kiba said, Who are you both talking about? Asuma said, Probably the strongest ninja in the village. Ino said, The Hokage. Kurinai said, No, not him. Anyways let's get our team meetings out of the way and get the testing done also. Everyone looked confused as they broke into individual teams. Back with Team 7 Naruto sneezes. Sakura looks at the clock on the wall and said, How late is this Kakashi going to be? Naruto said, How long has it been so far? Still with his eyes closed doing his exorcist. Sakura said, Two hours why? Naruto said, About another hour. Sasuke said, how do you know this Kakashi? Naruto said, when I found out who were on which teams I learned everything I could about them. Kakashi is quite famous. Backslash. Sasuke said, we did you call him Sharingan Kakashi? Naruto said, he has a Sharingan in one of his eyes and no he is not an Uchiha. It was implanted after he lost his eye. I don't know how or from who but he has one. He is said to have copied over 1000 Jutsu. We could only hope he teaches us some of them. However Naruto was thinking, I will actually be surprised if he knows one that I don't besides Chidori. Sasuke just HMPD. Naruto sighed and said, Sakura, why did you become a ninja? Sakura said, for someone who seems to know everything you don't know that. Naruto said, I am sorry, I was trying to be friendly and a teammate. You became a ninja to impress Sasuke and defeat your rival Ino who was going to be a ninja. You were the first female in your family to ever be a ninja and you believe that Sasuke will save you from any enemies that attack us. Answer me this Sakura, we get attacked by 20 enemies. I am fighting 5 ninja, Kakashi is fighting 5 ninja, Sasuke is fighting 5 ninja who are at least chunin or higher in rank. Who is going to fight the last 5 enemies? Sakura said. That won't happen until we get stronger so I don't have to worry about that. Naruto said, in the past 10 years over 60 genin have died thinking the same thing Sakura. Are you sure you want to bet your life on that belief or would you rather take the time to actually try and improve your skills? You might even be able to show Sasuke you are stronger than he thinks you are and then he might date you, not showing any emotions though he hated using a girl's lust for the traitor. Sakura sat quietly thinking what Naruto had just said. Naruto was quiet for a moment and said, what the hell? And jumped off the wall landing on his feet and looking at the door. Both Sasuke and Sakura looked at him and Sakura said, what? Naruto said, he's early. And just then the door opened and Kakashi walked in. Naruto said, you're not late. Kakashi smiled and Sakura said, yes he is. He's two hours late. Naruto looked at her and said, never mind. So what are your first impressions of us? Walking to the wall taking out the two kuniyas. Kakashi smiled and said, my first impression is, I hate you. Smiling behind his mask. Kakashi said, meet on the roof. And disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Naruto disappeared in a swirl of flames leaving Sasuke and Sakura confused. When Naruto got up there he said, what's the deal Kakashi? You're never early unless someone threatens you. Kakashi said, leave a cage bunch and go see the Hokage. Naruto nodded and created one and left to the Hokage office. 
When Naruto arrived in a swirl of flames in the Hokage office the sight that greeted him was not what he expected. No far from it, Naruto looked at the people there and said, Pardon the interruption Hokage-sama, Keizkage-sama. Kakashi-sensei said you needed my presence. The third smiled at the display of respect and said, Yes Naruto-san, the case cage has come today to discuss the arrangements of the alliance. Naruto nodded and said, I understand sir, what is it you need of me sir? Bowing at the two cages. The case cage said, I have heard some interesting things about you Naruto-san but I was not told what I truly wanted to know so perhaps since the third stated that only you could answer my question as the current head of your clan even though you are yet of age you have to distribute the info. Naruto nodded and said, I suppose I would be honored to answer what I can without revealing clan secrets. I request that since you obviously have many questions and it will take time to answers we drop the formalities of positions for the time being and since I don't like to repeat myself I also request that your three children who are outside in the lobby be allowed to listen in seeing if everything goes as I believe they will they will have access to my clan knowledge as well. The case cage looked at Naruto and said, I have no problem with dropping the formality but I do request how you knew my three children were here. Naruto said, Simple. I have enhanced senses and can detect the family trait in yourself and the three in the lobby. The case cage nodded and said, allow me to get them, and walked outside to the lobby closing the door. When he was gone Naruto said, quick did you say I requested it or you requested the marriage? The third said, I did why. Naruto was about to speak when the door opened and in walked the case cage followed by two boys and a girl. The case cage said, Hokegasama, Naruto-san. I would like to introduce my children. My eldest child Tamari, Konkuro and Gara, each bowing except Gara. Naruto walked over and said, It's a pleasure to meet you all, and kissed Tamari's hand and then shook Konkuro's and Naruto turned to Gara and the case cage and Tamari and Konkuro tried to stop him but Naruto surprised them all and hugged Gara. Tamari said, How? Naruto said, Shukaku can't hurt me. My bloodline stops the demon inside of him turning to look at the case cage and the S and S I B S. The case cage paled and said, how do you know this and what is your bloodline? Naruto walked to the window and sat down looking at them and said, perhaps I should tell you my name and who I really am so that we can get things off on the right foot. My real name is Naruto Kazama, son of Arashi Kazama. As for what bloodline I have I have the bloodline of the first Hokage as I am also one of his descendants. For my own safety I had my real name hidden until I was able to protect myself which I currently can but I won't take my real name until the day of my marriage. The name I go by now is Naruto Uzumaki. Konkuro said, that still does not explain how you knew about Gara. Naruto said, quick history lesson boys and lovely lady. What was the event of the Yandaimi Hokage, my father's death? The case cage thought for a moment and said, the Kyubi attack. Naruto said, based on your own experience from your son there think about what you actually know and what is public knowledge. The case cage thought for a moment and looked at Naruto who said, I believe you understand now. The case cage said, he sealed it inside you, didn't he? Naruto said, correct but the story does not end there. Because of my family bloodline I was able to absorb it all. I should also tell you whoever did his sealing was an idiot. Gara will die in less than 10 years unless someone fixes his seal. I could do it if you would like. The case cage said, how can you claim that his seal is going to kill him in less than 10 years if you did not see it? Naruto said, when I hugged Gara, his armor of sand parted at the seal enough for me to see it. Being a seal master myself bequace of fear from Kyubi I can make or break seals better than almost anyone in the five shinobi countries. Tamari said, why should we trust you? Naruto said, simple, I know the pain of loneliness having a demon sealed into you can cause. I don't wish that on anyone. If I can make his life better than I have to offer. Especially on the chance we might be family soon. The case cage said, if you fixed his seal what would happen? Naruto said, you have two options. He has a simple three star seal on it with a berserker seal over it. I can either put either another three-star seal on it but Gara would still suffer from the mental trauma of Shukaku and the Berserker seal or I could put on two four-star seals which would shut the raccoon up and allow Gara to sleep. 
he would still have his ability to use sand and it could pass down to his children but he would have to work on his control for about a month but it might actually be better than it is now, to get it back up to speed. Both options have benefits and setbacks. Either he still can't sleep and has his normal control but be in a state of insanity the longer it goes or he can sleep and become calmer but he would have to work on his control. Your choice but I would do it within the next year or the seal may degrade to a point where you will eventually have to seal all of his powers or release the demon and Gara dies. Tamari looked at her brother and then the case cage said, What guarantees can you provide that you can do this? Naruto said, If I can't deliver what I promise I will submit my life to your family. The third who had remained quite up to this point said, Naruto, you can't do that. You're the last of your family bloodline and. Naruto said, since the council does not know of the situation yet then they can't object. The third cursed to himself as he knew that Naruto had him there. Naruto said, I can do the sealing at my home and all of you can be present. Gara will pass out after the sealing for at least a half a day from being so long without sleep. The case cage was quiet for a moment and said, let me consider this while we discuss the preposal of the wedding. The third said, yes, that would be best. The case cage said, we were promised in exchange for this then we would receive 10 A rank jutsu, 15 B rank jutsu and 20 C rank jutsu as well as a percentage of missions. The third said, yes, that is what was agreed on but the percentage of missions and the exact details of the wedding have yet to be decided. The case cage said, I request 20% of all mission pays for the next five years. Naruto said, Pardon the interruption but I have a better preposal that would be beneficial to all parties involved. Everyone looked at him and the case cage said, proceed then. Naruto said, before I give my preposal I would like just an estimated guess to a question answer by you case cage. The case cage said, very well, if I can. Naruto said, what would the average of total yearly pay be for the village of Suna for the last three years? The case cage said, that is sensitive information. Naruto said, I understand. Allow me to rephrase my question is it less than $1.5 million a year? The case cage said, perhaps more or less. Naruto said, fair enough, I respect your secrecy of the info. Here is my offer. I am willing to pay $1.5 million to Suna for the next 5 years out of my own money plus a total of 10 jutsu only as an agreement. There are some stipulations though I do request. The case cage said, proceed. Naruto said, I request that Tamari has the right to decide if she wants this wedding or not and that she will be visiting Konoha one week a month until the Chunin exams to allow her and myself to get to know each other. For this right I will guarantee the first 1.5 million after the Chunin exams. I don't want her to feel I am buying her and she is a bargaining chip. I can tell already she has a strong spirit and I wish for her to keep that. The second stipulation is Suna and Konoha are not to attack each other. I have heard from a source that an enemy of Konoha is planning on trying to break Konoha and another country's alliance. I don't know which countries are involved but the man who told me is a trusted friend. Since I doubt Suna would do it then I don't have to worry but I learned a long time ago to make sure everything is thought of. Since I don't have proof of this I have not told the Hokage yet. Sorry Hokage-sama. The Hokage said. I understand but I would like for your source to let me know if he hears any more whether it is concrete or not, realizing what Naruto was doing. Naruto said, very well, if another country comes to you and offers to break our alliance or attack us we request that you notify us within 10 days and we will also should the roles be reversed. The case cage said, that is reasonable, what else? Naruto said, since I am the last heir of my clan. When it becomes public knowledge I will have to have more than one wife. Tamari has to realize that in advance if she agrees. Another stipulation is I have received information about a group of S-class missing nin that are after the tailed demons. Any and all information either country gets on them must be shared. I do not know who they all are but I do know too. Sasori of the Red Sand and Uchiha Itachi. The case cage said. I have no information on this group but we would appreciate any info you can provide. Naruto said, it will take me a few days but I can make sure Tamari has it when she returns from her first visit. I do have one bit of info on Sasori that you want like though. The case cage said, what is that? Naruto said, you know how he makes human puppets right. 
He has one that makes him very dangerous. Your predecessor. The one who went missing and can use the iron sand. The case cage said, are you sure of this? Naruto said, yes, I seen it about three years ago when he used it. Seeing as he is the only person I have ever heard of using iron sand means it was the case cage and he was human puppet and the man with Sasori called him that. The case cage said, I will let my people know. What else? Naruto said, I have not talked this over with the Hokage but I think if both councils would agree that one team out of every genin class that passes will be trained by the other village as a sign of mutual trust. That is all I can think of besides both Tamari and I will be considered a ninja of both villages after the marriage, if she agrees. I do request since the the only people who know I no longer have the demon in me are in this room and five others, you must not tell anyone about it until myself and the Hokage announces that. The case cage said, that is an interesting deal and I have a few stipulations myself but I would like to know how you are planning on paying this if we agree. Naruto said, I left the village at the age of five and traveled and trained in secret. During my travels I made some business adventures with money I made from odd and end jobs. Without touching my family's money and doing any missions I receive in over six million dollars a year in revenue just from being a silent partner. That got everyone's attention. The Hokage said, what investments? Naruto said, I made some money and bought Jeriaya publisher. He does not know it. The third paled and said, you bought that publisher. The case cage said, what publisher? The third peeled out a book and tossed it to the case cage who looked at it and said, are you shitting me? Naruto said, nope. Anyways, do we have a deal? Assertion Broody Uchiha will probably kill my teammate before I get back and we just were assigned teams today. Actually never mind the meeting just ended. Everyone looked at him and he said, I left a kajbunshin so I did not miss anything with my team. The case cage said, may I have a word with my children in private? Naruto nodded and said, my offer to fix Gara's seal is good whether you accept the deal or not. And he walked over to the Hokage. The Hokage said, the room to your right is a private conference room I sometimes use. You can go in there and talk. The case cage nodded and walked into the room and his three kids followed. When the door closed the Hokage whispered, what were you thinking Naruto telling him so much? Naruto said, when I showed them I could get through Gara's sand defense without being killed I scared them. The sand should have killed me but it did not. As for what I said about the plant you and me both know it is a lie and the real reason Kyubi is gone is a lie. As for the jutsu being promised none of them are leaf jutsu so nobody can say anything about that and because of a deal Kyubi taught me I have more money in dimensional storage than I can ever hope to use. I really do own the publisher and a few other things but that is to legitimize all the money I have. I laid a careful trap. If he accepts the deal a few weeks from now he will either come and tell us about Orochimaru or he will betray us. Gara will do anything to shut that damn raccoon up even kill his father if he gets in the way. I did not give enough info for them to know we know anything and gave him a way to save his village. It's time to see if he deserves to be cage. The third sighed and said, I wish you would talk this over with me before you do this. I am a cage after all. Also, what's this about showing them your home? Naruto said, I have built a safe house I can use and was going to show them it. My real house no one can find unless they know where to look. Just then the door opened and Asuma walked in along with Kakashi and Kurenai and a bruised looking Anko. Naruto looked at her and said, tried to find my house huh? Anko said, shut up Gaki. I should have known you had traps set up in there to protect you house. A voice from behind the Junins said, yes you should. A kid as talented as Naruto here should be able to come up with some interesting traps being a sealmaster and all. The Junins turned and saw the case cage with his arms crossed. A girl a little older than Naruto with a fan on her back looking pissed. A boy with makeup looking at his brother and father and a red-headed boy who looked to be straining. Naruto bowed and was panting a little like he ran for miles and said, Case Cage Sama. Allow me to introduce some of the Leafs finest. Hitaki Kakashi, Yuhi Kuranai, Mitarashi Anko and Asuma Saratobi. This is the Case Cage and his family Tamari, Konkuro and Gara. The Junins bowed and Naruto said, these are the four of the five I told you who knew about me no longer possessing Kyubi. I trust them each with my life and trust. 
The Junins could not help but feel a little respect from what Naruto said but did not show it with who was in the room. Also the fact he was acting tired had them worried. The fact the red-headed boy was also panting was something they were worried about. The case cage nodded and said, I have discussed it with my family and we are very interested in your preposal. I request that Tamari visit one week every two months since the Chunin exams are only five months away and her and her brothers both need to prepare. When she returns she will be with her brothers this time so you can fix that problem. Also you should know that I agree to your secret except, if you make it to the finals of the exam you must use your true name. I want my daughter's suitor to be known for who he is, not a lie. Naruto said, I understand and agree but my true name must remain a secret until that time. If Tamari decides she is in favor of this then she is the one who will announce it first is not to bind her to this deal should she not wish this. The case cage said, fine. Until we meet Aegean, a pleasure is always Hokage. And he walked out the door followed by his children. Naruto waited till they left the room and fell to his knees. Everyone gasped or called out his name. Naruto was panting and after a moment finally stood up. The Hokage asked, what happened? Naruto said, damn raccoon and that fucking bastard. Asuma said, what do you mean? Naruto said, the redhead boy. He's the vessel of the raccoon demon Shukaku. Even with Gara fighting it he was wanting to kill us all back there. I was having to channel energy into this room to keep the case cage from figuring out there is a limit to how I can control the demon. I could not remove the blockers I have on without having half the village bursting in here. I bet the fucking bastard actually had Gara releasing the demon some to test me. That's why I was panting. Kakashi said, what exactly was that about? Naruto sat in a chair and said, when I first came back I asked the old man here to arrange a political marriage with the case cage's daughter and me. I never intend to force her into it that's why I made those stipulations where it would be by her choice. When they arrived today I had a plan set up in case something like this comes so I already knew what I was going to say. I bribed the bastard, pure and simple. The Hokage said, let's not forget you intimidated him and also hinted we knew about someone wanting to break relations with us and our allies somewhat. Also you're making yourself a slave was quite an act. Enko and Kurenai said, what? Naruto said, the bastard is afraid of losing his village's secret weapon. Sure the side of him that as a father would like to fix Gara's problem but the asshole never was a good father so I offered him something to tempt his ego. The only person who has the power of a demon. Should the ceiling go wrong then he would still have his so-called weapon. The third said, are you sure you can do the ceiling? Naruto said, have before. I know enough about ceiling to be a seal master. I lived enough times I can make the seal that held Kyubi look weak if I wanted to. That made everyone pale at the possibilities. Naruto looked at Kakashi and said, Did you really have to call me that during the team meeting? Kakashi looked up from his book and said, Yes, it's not like you can do anything to get even with me though. Anko said, What he call you Gaki? Naruto said, Bleach blonde dead last. And Kakashi, you underestimated me Aegean. Kakashi said, Why is that? Naruto said, I can make that book of yours not be released in Konoha if I wanted. Kurenai said, Really, how? The third said, Naruto, you would do that. Naruto said, I will if he does that Aegean. Kakashi thinking it was a bluff said, How can you be sure you can do that? Naruto said, Like I told the case cage. Over the past few years I have made some investment and I bought a few companies. One such company is the publisher of that book, Pervert. Kakashi paled and said, you're joking, right? Naruto looked at Anko and smirked before he said, Anko, my house is not on the ground. The third said, so what do we do now? Naruto said, proceed as planned for now. When Tamari comes for her visits make sure my team only has d rank missions so I can talk to her and get to know her and her me. If the council wants to know why you are letting me escort her around town say that her father requested it. You have no idea why. Also better start planning on announcing my real name when the time comes. The third nodded and Naruto said, is that all? Asuma said, I think Kurenai has something to say, only to receive an elbow in the gut. Everyone looked at Kurenai after she hit him and she said, I do need to say something but later. I need to gather my thoughts. Naruto nodded and said, 
CYA tomorrow then Kakashi. Have fun. And disappeared in a swirl of flames. After Naruto was gone everyone looked at each other and the third said, so what are you here for anyways? Kakashi said, I was coming to tell Naruto when and where to meet tomorrow but I guess he knows the secret of Kajbunshins. Asuma said, Kurinai and I have already tested our teams and they passed so we just came to turn in the paperwork. Enko who looked like she'd been through hell said, I saw Kakashi and he said Gaki was here so I came to talk to him to see if I could get any more info on where his house is. I believe it is in the western section furthest away from the village because that is where the traps I encountered were. The third said, what kind of traps? Anko said, anyone who did not know his way around would die if they tried to get through it. I lost nine summons and triggered nearly 200 traps in a hundred yard range. Asuma whistled and said, I am glad he's on our side. Kurinai said, I just hope the village does not do something to get us on his bad side. Imagine the ETH and destruction that he could cause. The third nodded and said, Okay, let's call it a day. Thanks to our visitor I am behind on paperwork so I need to get to work. Acting busy as everyone started to leave. When they were gone he pulled out his Ika Ika Paradise and created three cage bunshins to do the paperwork. As the four Junins walked outside the Hokage office Anko said, I am hungry, you all want to come and get some dango. Kurinai said, Sure, Asuma said, why not, don't have anything else planned. Kakashi said, sure, it's not like I need to get up early for anything. Anko nodded and started walking toward her favorite dango stand, rig tag. It only took them a few minutes to get to the stand but the sight that graded them was not what they expected. There was a sign that said, under new management, out front but when they went inside they saw the old owner standing there working the register like always. Anko said, Leo, what's up with the sign? The old owner said, oh that. I have been having money problems for a few years with the cost of shipping supplies in and everything increasing so much that I was afraid I was going to have to close. About a year ago a guy came up and offered to help if he was allowed to be a partner. At first I told him no but he kept talking and said only thing he wanted to do was bring in a few new items and get new supply lines. I was under contract with my old ones and could not change them until recently but now the new lines are coming in and so we decided to announce the deal even though he's been my partner for over a year now. Asuma said, so what new items has he brought in? Leo said, well just mostly a few variations on dango like some fruit and also some drinks. Nothing major because he did not want to change what my costumers have liked for years. What surprised me was that he also helped the ramen stand down the road owned by that one guy and his daughter. The only thing he changed about them besides getting new ingredients is he wanted a few drinks that I don't carry. He said he did that to help our economy and also he wanted to repay a debt of kindness. Hey, I am not one to complain. So what would you have? Anko said, I will have the usual. Kurinai looked at the menu and said, give me one of those starfruit dangos and I will also try the flame wine. I have not drunk any of that stuff in almost five years as it's next to impossible to get. Kakashi said, I will have a shrimp dango and some sake. Asuma said, I will have the beef dango and some sake also. Leo nodded and said, have a seat and I will bring it out to you shortly. The group did and Asuma said, that was unusual. Anko said, what do you mean? Asuma said, well, usually when someone goes into partnership like that they usually want to change names, change the menu, add their own ideas to the company. All this guy seemed to do was just make it easier to do what he already was doing and add a total of 10 items to the list like they were all his favorites or something. Seems like a lot of work to ensure that his favorite foods are available here if you ask me. A man in the booth behind them with his feet propped up on a chair said, it is but when I am in town since I live alone I like to spoil myself every now and then. All of the Junins were caught off guard as not noticing the man sitting there or even felt him eavesdropping on their conversation. Anko hating to be caught off guard said, it's not nice to eavesdrop on a conversation buddy. The man who was sitting with a glass of wine a bit of fruit in a bowl and a book in his hand dressed in a black pair of shorts and a white pullover t-shirt said, I am sorry for that Anko. I did not do it on purpose. I just wanted to relax after earlier today and did not feel the need to cook myself. 
Asuma narrowed his eyes and said, Mind if I ask how you know Anko friend? Just then Leo came over with fear food and said, Oh Arashi, I see you met some of my best customers. I want to thank you again for allowing me to make those new renovations that are coming. Arashi said, No problem Leo, like I told you before as part of the deal, you have $400 thousand a year to use for whatever you want as long as you make sure the fresh fruit and my wines are in whenever I feel the need to show up and as long as you never turn away a customer because another customer does not like that one. I feel everyone should be treated fairly no matter who they are. As long as they can pay the price on the sign they are all equal no matter if they are a king or a peasant or anything in the middle, still not looking up from his book. Leo said, of course not. After helping me with so much I would hate to do anything to upset my partner. Arashi said, is your son still planning on going to rice country next week? Leo said, yeah, his friend from childhood quit writing almost four months ago and he wanted to check on him. Arashi said, rice is having a sort of problem with missing nins right now. I know that he is stubborn and all but I hope he will listen to my advice and hire some ninja. I told him I would gladly pay for it. He is a good orthor and I would hate to see something happen to him. Leo said, I will talk to him Aegean. I trust your advice since you've been right before. Well I got customers, enjoy your evening, and walked back to the counter. Arashi sighed as he took a drink from his wine and turned a page in his book and still felt the other ninja keeping an eye on him. He said, relax Asuma, even a genin knows better than to call out a total stranger's name like I did. Asuma said, then if you know better, why did you do it and who are you to talk to us so casually? Each of the ninja had a weapon in case he was an enemy. Arashi said, it never fails to surprise me when a ninja fails to look underneath the underneath, right Sensiheim. Kurinai stiffened for a moment and blushed and said, so this is your disguise a Nauru, ooh um, as she closed her eyes in pleasure. She was cut off zudanly by Arashi putting his finger to her neck and sending a small amount of chakra to her pleasure nerves. Kurinai slowly opened her eyes and Kakashi said, what was that Arashi? Arashi chuckled and closed his book and said, I am sure you understand why I am using my father's first name but I just hit a massage point I learned over my lifetime. I figured doing that would have been better than saying don't use that name while I got this disguise on. Asuma said, don't you think you're being paranoid Arashi? Arashi snorted and said, keep an eye on the street for the next few minutes and tell me if I am paranoid or not. Oh and watch my stuff. That book is getting good and I still like to finish my wine as he headed outside and around the corner. Two minutes later Naruto walked by the outside of the dango stand with all four ninja watching what was going on. They were surprised by what they saw. Apparently word spread about Naruto being back in town because he when he walked down the road a fresh fruit vendor threw a rotten tomato at him and a man spat on the sidewalk in front of him and Naruto said, hi, to a woman and she pulled her kids away saying, not to go near him he's a bad man. About five minutes later Arashi walked in and sat down in his seat Aegean and said, The only people I have met that know I am back besides your for the old man and Ibiki is Aruka, Mizuki who is in jail, the guy who takes ninja pictures and the kids at the academy. Just from a possible 30 people hearing my name and 27 of them not knowing about me has already spread across the village. I say by the end of the week the council will have a meeting and someone will either try to have me killed or kicked out of the village for being a threat. This village would take Orochimaru and Uchiha Itachi back with open arms and pardons if they had a choice of getting them and get rid of me or keep me and get rid of them. He grabbed his book and finished his glass of wine. He turned and said, enjoy your meals. Don't worry Kakashi. I won't tell the other two the hidden reason behind the bell test tomorrow. The upset chicken-headed insignificant hard ass will probably want to test his strength agents me in a fight and the pink harpy will think Sasuke is the best and will save her from anything so I won't really care about showing any real skills during the test but I will try to be a team player. I enjoyed the conversation with you all and hope we can do it Aegean sometimes. It's nice to relax with people you trust. Anko said. Question Gaki, how come you call her Sensiheim but never call me any type of affection? Arashi said, simple Anko, I promised you in my past, I would never call you those until I killed the Hebatem. I keep my promises, besides, 
You won't let any guy get truly close to you until you know the thing on your shoulder will never affect you Aegean. That reminds me. After the exams I will remove yours Aegean. CYA, as he started to walk to the door. Anko screamed. Wait. Everyone in the restaurant looked at her. Luckily the owner, Arashi, and the three other Junins were all that was in there. Naruto turned and walked back over and said, Yes. Anko said, You can remove it. Naruto said, Level 1 I can but only if the host truly wants it. For you I can but with his pow. Every one of the Junins who were looking at him a moment ago listening now heard a low growl and saw his eyes flash red for a moment freaking them for a moment. They looked at him and saw his eyes narrow and looked out on the street to see what he was upset about. They saw a black hair boy talking with a gray haired boy with glasses. Kurinai said, What's wrong? Naruto watched the boys outside in silence a few moments and saw the black haired boy hand the gray haired one a folder. Naruto whispered, Motherfucking traitor. Kakashi nodded to the others and put his hands on Naruto's shoulder and they all leave Shushine to the Hokage's office. When they got there Kakashi saw only the Hokage there and said, Naruto, what was that about? The third saw them arrived and after hearing Kakashi call the man Nordo figured it was a henge and listened as Naruto said, I knew there was a connection but never could prove it. That is how he got all our info. The third said, what Naruto? Naruto walked over and powered a Rasengan and destroying a target dummy in the corner surprising the others by both the Rasengan and the speed and display he made and said, that gray-haired boy was Kabuto, Orochimaru's right-hand man and spy. He is stronger and more dangerous than you Kakashi so don't underestimate him when the time comes. He can regenerate from near death so make sure you destroy his body. The other boy you all saw was Sai, with venom in his voice. Naruto closed his eyes because he is feeling his rage building. Asuma said, What's so special about that Sai kid? Naruto said, He is a member of Root and Danzo's son. Silence filed the room at that. Naruto said, I knew there was a connection there but never could find it. I need to calm down before I go out and kill them both, walking over and sitting on the window seal. The third said, What happened? Asuma said, We ran into Naruto in his disguise he has on at the dango shop. Naruto was just explaining how he was going to remove Anko's cursed seal when he saw those two men. We saw his eyes change color and became concerned when he ignored us and we saw the two men talk and one pass a package to the other. We brought him here to find out what that was all about and to calm him down. Naruto sighed and said, I want to thank you all. Even with all my experience I still act on impulse sometimes. I was not expecting to see that. I guess you Kakashi will be the only teammate I have that won't betray me. Kakashi said, What do you mean Naruto? Naruto said, Sasuke will try to kill me when he defects. After Sasuke defects me and Sakura get specialized training. Me under Jeriaya and Sakura under Tsunade. The lifetimes that those events happen we get a special mission to retrieve Sasuke. You are unable to because of injuries so Yamato replaces you as our sensei and Sai replaces Sasuke. Now I find out Sai is working with Orochimaru pisses me off. As for what I mean by Sakura. If I show any skill Sasuke wants he will promise her a date if he can't get me or you to tell him and use her as his personal spy to look around my home or try and get me to tell. Sorry, I learn from my mistakes. Kurinai said, Are you sure you're not jumping to conclusions Naruto about this Sai guy? Naruto said, Old man, you know Sai right. The third said, I have met him before yes, why? Naruto said, What was his personality like? The third said, I don't understand. Naruto sighed still in his Arashi henge and said, Danzo groomed Sai since the day he could remember to be his personal servant. He forced Sai to become socially isolated. He has no emotions at all. He won't talk to anyone because he does not know how to. All he knows is how to kill and do whatever Danzo tells him. If he says to kill yourself with a smile on and cry at the same time he will. He does not know how to think for himself. Do you see what I am trying to say? There is no way he would be on the street talking with someone unless Danzo told him to. He can't even leave Root headquarters without Danzo okay. The third sighed and said, That is what I was afraid of when he wanted you to be a secret weapon for the village all those years ago. Just then the door opened up and the secretary said, 
Sorry to bother you Hokage-sama but Hayuga Hiyash is here to see you. The third said, send him in. But notice Naruto had disappeared but the others were still there and the training dummy was back in place Aegean undamaged. Hiyash walked in and the third said, to what do I owe the pleasure Hiyash? Hiyash looked at the four in the room and said, this is concerning something I heard today and might be discussed in private. The third said, I believe I already know why you were here Hiyash but go ahead. I need to finish talking with them after this anyways so go ahead. Hiyash said, very well. I have received reports that Naruto Uzumaki is back. The third said, yes what of it? Hiyash said, I also heard he is now a ninja of this village. Am I correct? The third said, yes. Why are you here Hiyash? Surely you are not just here to learn if a few rumors are true. Hiyash said, certainly not. I was notified by several other council members and they want to know why that child has returned and why he was allowed to be a ninja. They are also demanding to know where the child has been for these years. I came here to ascertain the truth of this. The third said, and what do you plan to do Hiyash? Hiyash said, that demon is too dangerous to allow back in this village. If he is not removed from this village the council will have no choice but to remove you and have a new Hokage named. Naruto dropped the diskwise in the corner and said, actually Hiyash the council would be overstepping its boundaries if it tried to remove me. Hiyash was surprised that he had not sensed the boy in the corner but hid it and said, why is that boy? Naruto said, oh it's boy now, at least you're smart enough not to break the third's law while I am officially here in the office. Very well I will tell you why the council can't, the laws of this village are on my side this time, Hayuga-san. Hiyash said, you will do well to show respect to your superiors. Naruto said, I did seeing as I am a clan head myself and also a council member. This got everyone's attention not knowing what he meant. Hiyash smirked and said, really now boy, what makes you think you have either of those rights? Naruto smirked himself and said, allow me to show you. And he walked to the picture of the yandaimi and cut his finger and put the blood on the picture and it morphed into an open safe. Hiyash was surprised along with everyone else and Naruto reached in and pulled out a scroll and said, this is the proof I need Hiyash, and tossed him a scroll. Hiyash opened it and paled at what he read. Hiyash said, there must be a mistake. Naruto said, nope, the blood seal on the safe is proof and if my grandmother comes to the village then all it would take is a simple blood test. The third said, what exactly does it say Hiyash? Naruto said, go ahead, I don't mind. I have my copy of that anyways so if someone were to destroy it I still have proof. Hiyash handed the scroll to the third and after thinking for a moment said, that proves you're a clan head. That does not make you a council member though. Naruto said, actually, you're right, I actually have four council seats. Hiyash narrowed his eyes and said, what do you mean? Naruto said, I have my father's seat based on the laws of Konoha's charter state that all cages living or deceased closest living relative is automatically given a seat on the council forever. Second I have my family seat since my family was one of the original clans of Konoha like yours so that is my second seat. My third seat is mine because of my grandfather's family and because he is not here in the village and I am the only blood relation of his family in the village I have his seat. The third said, I know Tsunade is your grandmother but who is your grandfather? Hiyash said, yes I would also like to know that. Naruto said, Kakashi is reading his book right now. Everyone turned and saw a copy of Ika Ika Paradise fall to the ground. Kakashi said, you hate me don't you? Naruto smirked and said, yeep. Not only do I own the publishing company for those books but my grandfather writes them. Now Hiyash before you have a heart attack I think you should know one more thing before the council tries to get rid of me. Hiyash said, that is. Naruto said, do you know why I am able to not be insane after what this village has done to me because of the Kayubi? Hiyash did not answer and Naruto said, my bloodline. I have the bloodline to control demons just like the first Hokage. Now here is something the council better learn quickly as it seems to forget the laws of our village charter. The third said, what do you mean Naruto? Even I am not sure what you're talking about now. Naruto said, as stated by the charter of this village, 
Any founding family member of Konoha that is from a founding clan has not only free travel to come and leave as they please but also any structures or resources built on the lands that were divided among the original clans are always owned by those clans and cannot be taken away, given or sold by anyone. They will remain owners of those lands and any buildings or resources of those lands for as long as the village of Konoha stands and cannot be taken by the council, future Hokage, or any other person or persons of power. Hiyash said, What exactly are you getting at? Naruto said, Hokagasama, can you bring out the map of the current village of Konoha while I grab something out of the safe? The Hokage nodded and grabbed the map and Naruto walked back with an old scroll and opened it and said, Notice anything, as the scroll showed a map of the original Konoha. Asuma looked on and said, My god, as everyone looked. Hiyash said, That can't be right. Naruto said, when I first saw it myself I checked with the map in the archives and they are identical. My family owns everything from the Hokage monument to the current south walls of the village. The Hayuga and Uchiha own everything from the Akademi to Theer compound. The Thirds clan owns what they still own as do the other clans. The reason my clan lands are like this is because we were the first to allow others besides clans to move in and gave them homesteader rights. Even thought the village has prospered and everything, the law is the law. My family is seeing as Tsunade and myself are the last two of our clan own the entire village of Konoha from the boundary of the Akademi to the south wall north to the Hokage monument which means that every building including the Hokage tower, hospital, stores, restaurants and homes are mine. The council cannot get rid of me. Oh and just one more thing Hiyash. Look at my body with your bloodline. Hiyash did and was surprised and seeing as his coils were larger than anyone he had ever seen and it was all blue chakra except a small amount of red and said, how? Naruto said, I have almost absorbed all of Kayubi's power as my own. As far as the council should care by the time I am 16 it will be dead if not sooner. I am sure you don't want to call me demon again do you Hayuga, especially with the power you can see is at my disposal to either defend this villages as I plan to like my family has or if the village wishes to make me an enemy. Hiyash said, I have a lot to consider, trying to figure the best way to use this to his advantage. If what Naruto said is true then he has Konoha by the balls. Naruto sighed and said, Hiyash, I may not like you and you may not like me but I have a proposition for you I think you might actually like. Hiyash said, what's that? Naruto said, how would you like to be rid of the cage seal on your family forever while still able to secure your bloodline? This got everyone's attention and Hiyash said, what do you mean? Naruto said, nobody knows my true skills because I left the village to train. During that time I have become a seal master of sorts. In fact my skills helped me speed up the process to kill Kayubi. After I become Chunin I plan to go for my Junin status right after and my Sealmaster certifications. I have designed a seal after I heard the detail of what happened with Cloud and your brother. Hiyash narrowed his eyes and Naruto said, I know the entire truth Hiyash and Neji and Hinata both I feel lost on that deal. It's for them that I made a seal that would still seal the bloodline at death but would make it where you could put it on everyone and not on Thier foreheads but over Thier hearts. If you would like I can have Hanada bring them by sometime this coming week and let you have your own experts look at them. I also can remove the cage seal if you want. The only real difference is the seal won't be able to torture a branch member like your current seal does. But if everyone has one then you don't need a branch family but that's your clan. I just thought I would try and make peace with your clan and mine. I plan to restore my clan and I don't want my children to have to deal with any animosity if I can help it. Hiyash said, before I decide on anything I would like to know how you know about the incident and what exactly you know. Naruto said, while I was traveling I met a missing nin from Cloud. He told me about how he was supposed to meet the man you killed and help bring Hinata back. He did not know I was from here at the time because I was hanged into a missing mist nin. He told me about how they discovered the switch but was too late to object and how he was supposed to be killed because of his failure. I killed him and turned him in for the bounty Cloud had on him. Anyways after that I went to Cloud and turned in a bounty on the man and while I was there I broke into the record office and found out more info. Apparently they found out your brother took your place to save your life. I also found out that they had help from a Hayuga named Hiri in getting the details of your family home. 
Hiyash narrowed his eyes and said, Do you have any proof of this? Naruto said, All I got is of the mission scroll the Cloud Nin I killed had on him. He was supposed to destroy it but used it as a bargaining chip to keep Cloud from sending hunters after him. It detailed when and where to meet Hiri and what he was supposed to deliver for the info. Everyone in the room was stunned at this and Hiyash dropped his emotionless mask and said, If you do have that I will make you a deal. Naruto said, Give me about five minutes and I will be back, and flamed Shushin away. Hiyash looked at the third and said, Did you know this? The third said, No. Only thing I know for sure is Naruto found out who his family is and then said he was leaving to train. He is back now but almost everything from the time he left to when he got back I know nothing about. I will tell you this. What he has told me is true. Just then a flame Shushin appeared and Naruto had a scroll and looked at Kakashi and said, Sharingan can't copy it. I mix my wind affinity with the demon Charka to cause the effect. He then walked over to Hiyash and handed the scroll and said, here you are. Hiyash opened it and began to read it and said, I can't believe he would do that. Naruto said, I believe it. From what I can tell he is one of your council members in your clan. His father was going to be named clan head but yours was instead and I guess he has a grudge. Am I right about him being on your council? Hiyash nodded and said, yes. Naruto said, well, what is this deal you spoke of? Hiyash said, I will support your position as the current clan head and backing on the council. I will also agree to help with anything you need to restore your clan if I am able to. Naruto said, Money is not an issue and I want to state this now Hiyash. I am not interested in an arranged marriage with your daughters. It's not that I don't like them or anything. It just I want my marriages to any woman to be love. I have an arrangement in the works but I have already told all party involved that it has to be love and not responsibility. I will still have Hanada deliver the seal to you sometime in the next week. I do have a small request. I know that Neji is your nephew and his hate for the main house is clouding his judgment. Could you reveal the truth before the Chunin exams? I fear if he and Hanada somehow met he might use that forum to avenge his father. Hiyash said, I will do as you asked. I do request that when your future weddings are I am invited, though I do have one question. Do you know who your mother is? Naruto said, for now no. I am hoping to meet and convince Tsunade to return to Konoha and if she does I will try to talk her into doing a blood test on all records in Konoha archives to see if she can tell me who it is since she does not know about me yet. Hiyash said, what do you mean? Naruto said, when Tsunade had my father the village was at war. She hid him in the orphanage to protect him from her enemies. My father did not know about her being his mother until he became Hokage and performed the same request I am going to ask of Tsunade. Since until I returned from my training trip the only person who knew I was Arashi's son was the third I am using it to my advantage to get everything set up for my clan's return to Konoha. However I do still have laws to protect me should the council try anything to stop me or my clan. Hiyash said, if I may ask. How do you know the laws of this village so well? Naruto said, I have an almost photographic memory and can read the entire Konoha library in one day with a just you I know. I used that jutsu with permission from one of the fire lords who had copies of all laws of Konoha and its charters. Hiyash said, I see. Naruto said, Well Hiyash, it is getting late and I know you have a lot to think about but I would like for you to keep what you heard here a secret until I make it public. I don't want to cause a riot seeing as I am consider a demon of the village instead of the hero my father wanted. Have a good evening everyone. And flamed Shushin away. Hiyash turned and saw the third looking at him and the third said, Now Hiyash, I would like to remind you about my law. Don't let me catch you calling him a demon Aegean or I will take actions. Hiyash nodded and said, Kazama-san said he had an arrangement in the works. Might I inquire as to what it is? The third said, I am not at liberty to say at this time. I can tell you it will either be finalized or cancelled by the time the finals of the Chunin exams. Hiyash nodded and said, We really messed up didn't we? The third said, I may not know his exact skills Hiyash but I can tell you this. He is stronger than his father. Hiyash paled and said, I see. Perhaps I should do everything I can to help him and his clan. If what he said is true his clan would be a welcome addition to any village. Kakashi said, what do you mean? 
Hiyash said. I know what he was referring to when he said he still had other laws that protect his clan. As clan head he has the right to call for a vote of all current members in the village. He has the right to remove his clan and seize all of his clan's holdings and move them should three quarters of the clan in the village agrees. Since he is the only clan member in the village he can take his clan to any village he chooses. The third paled and said, I hope you will do what you promised Hiyash. If he becomes upset without village he can destroy it without lifting a finger. Hiyash nodded and left. The Junins looked at each other and Anko said, Gaki was right Aegean. The third said, What? Kurinai said, Earlier when we told him he was being paranoid hanging in public he showed us he was not by walking down the street as himself and saw the villagers being cruel. He also said the council would try to get rid of him by the end of the week. Looks like that started also. Kakashi said, Why do I keep feeling like I am the child when he is in the room? The third said, Because every since I met him at the age of five and he told me the truth, I felt the same way. Asuma said, I want to know how he did that to you ate the restaurant. Kurinai blushed and said, None of your business. I need to go. And she left in a swirl of leaves. Kakashi said, You really enjoying this errant you? Asuma said, Yeep. I think she could use someone in her life. Kakashi said, I thought you both had a thing going. Asuma said, Well, we just hang out mostly. Hell the last two times we tried dating we never even kissed. Kakashi nodded and said, You have anything you want me to work on Hokegasama? The third said, Try to evolutate him if you can Kakashi. Kakashi nodded and left in a swirl of leaves. Anko started walking toward the door but stopped and said, I know the Gaki has a reason for not doing it now but do me a favor and find out why he won't remove it now for me. The third said, I will but it will be hard. Anko nodded and melted into the floor. Asuma looked at the third and said, So what's really going on dad? The third said, Honestly I don't know. The more I think I understand the less I actually do. Asuma said, Do you really trust him? The third sighed and said, Truthfully, No, it's all too convenient. If what he says is true then I have no choice but to trust him but it's all a little hard to believe. I am going to get a hold of my former students and find out if what he said is true. If it is then I have more proof than his word. Asuma said, I should let you know that he is buying into a few business in town. Either he is truly saying the truth or he is setting something up. The third nodded and said, for now I want you to train your team normally. I may change everyone's training if I find out later that he is telling the truth. I hope my lack of faith does not come back to bite me or this village in the ass. Asuma nodded and left. Neither the third nor Asuma detected the small plant fade into the ground in the corner of the office. In Naruto's house he slowly opened his eyes and said, I hope so to old man. I hope so too. Looks like I will have to do things myself for a while. Perhaps someday someone will actually trust me once they know who I am. And he put his book back into the shelf of his library and walking upstairs to his bedroom. There comes a point in everyone's life where they have only one thought in their mind. That thought is I wonder how I can piss the world off today. That thought went through Naruto's mind when he started getting ready for the day. He looked to his weapons scrolls and other items he would need for the day. He looked at his cloths in the closet and smirked as he decided what to do today. Sakura was in a dream world today. First she got up an hour earlier than she normally would because today she was going to take a test with her Sasukekan. She got her best dress and put on her makeup got all the little journals she kept on Sasuke and the new journal she bought yesterday to write everything her and Sasuke did now that they are on the same team. She thought about her other teammate and said, what a jerk, remembering how he described himself. It was one line, my name is Naruto, that made everyone their sweat drop. Sakura looked at the clock and said, I am going to be late. Funny thing is she is two hours earlier than she is supposed to be. Sasuke was in his shower getting ready for the day. His thoughts were today I will be one step closer to killing him. After getting out of the shower he put on his clothes that he had laid on his bed and quickly left to meet his team. He stopped for a moment feeling something was wrong but could not figure it out. Oh well, it will only get in my way to kill him. On his way to the training ground when he would pass someone who was a ninja they would snicker at him but his pride would not let him ask why. 
Sasuke and Sakura arrived within five minutes of each other but Sasuke ignored her and she was busy writing something in journal. Two hours after they were supposed to meet for theater team meeting both Kakashi and Naruto had not shown up. Suddenly the sound of music echoed across the village of Konoha waking everyone who was not up yet and making everyone cover theater ears. Now some of you might be wondering where the music was coming from. That is actually kind of funny. When people started to exit theater houses to see where the music was coming from they saw something that no one in the history of the village had ever seen. A certain red-eye woman looked at the source and started to laugh her ass off. Everyone looked up at the Hokage monument and saw the four faces of the Hokage singing with the words to the song and showing actual expressions. Of course it was a genjutsu but that was besides the point. Her laughter grew even more to the point she started to cry when a figure was seen walking down the middle of the street. Said figure was 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed about 160 pounds. He had blonde hair and blue eyes. He was currently dancing to the music that was playing. Now that would be funny but was not the reason said red-eye woman was laughing. No the reason was how he was dressed or not dressed would be a better word for it. The only cloths he had on was a pair of boxers that had the word sexy on the front and a picture of two hands on the back and a pimp hat with a cane. Once the figure got closer and the red-eye woman could see his muscles and how ripped he was he said, morning sensei as he continued to dance through town on his way to the training ground. Now the song he was dancing to and the Hokages were singing went a little like this. I'm too sexy for my love too sexy for my love. Love's going to leave me. I'm too sexy for my shirt too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. And I'm too sexy for Konoha too sexy for Konoha. Suna and Iwa. And I'm too sexy for your party. Too sexy for your party. No way I'm disco dancing. I'm a model you know what I mean. And I do my little turn on the catwalk. Yeah on the catwalk on the catwalk yeah. I do my little turn on the catwalk. I'm too sexy for my bar too sexy for my bar. Too sexy by far. And I'm too sexy for my hat. Too sexy for my hat what do you think about that? I'm a model you know what I mean. And I do my little turn on the catwalk. Yeah on the catwalk on the catwalk yeah. I shake my little touche on the catwalk. I'm too sexy for my too sexy for my too sexy for my. Cause I'm a model you know what I mean. And I do my little turn on the catwalk. Yeah on the catwalk on the catwalk yeah. I shake my little touche on the catwalk. I'm too sexy for my cat too sexy for my cat. Poor pussy poor pussy cat. I'm too sexy for my love too sexy for my love. Love's going to leave me. And I'm too sexy for this song. Kakashi who along with anyone else who was asleep decided to give it up as the music still played and got ready for the day. When he got to the training ground the song was just about to end and he looked at his team but sweat dropped as two of his students were gaping looking behind Kakashi. He turned and sweat dropped as his third student was currently standing on top of water still dancing with the music. As the final line of HTE song hit Naruto took off his pimp hat and threw it in his cane in the air just at the last word they went up in a puff of smoke and suddenly everyone's attention was diverted to Sasuke as he was consumed in a puff of smoke. When the smoke cleared the shirt Sasuke had on now had changed. His traditional blue Uchiha shirt was now a sleeveless t-shirt that said. I am an upset, chicken, headed, insignificant, hard, ass. Kakashi sweat dropped and Sakura fainted from the mental trauma. Sasuke was fuming on the inside and Naruto looked like nothing was wrong. After reviving Sakura, Kakashi said, now that everyone is awakened, looks at Naruto who is still dressed only in his boxers, ready, I guess I will now explain the test. He pulls out two bells. Kakashi said, now, you have three hours to get these bells from me and the one who does not has to go back to the academy. Come at me with the intent to kill. Begin. Sasuke and Sakura disappeared into the surrounding area and Naruto just leaned against a tree and pulled out an Enpod don't own any right and scrolled down the list of song. Kakashi sweat dropped and said, compared to the others you're weird. Naruto smirked and stood up stretching and said, this one's for you Kakashi, and hit play. Naruto got into a stance Kakashi recognized as the Iron Fist style guy used and said, oh shit as the music started playing across the entire village Aegean as the Hokage sang. Suddenly Naruto smirked and Kakashi pulled up his high eight showing his Sharingan causing Sasuke to gasp. 
Then they both blurred out of existence. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Those cats were fast as lightning. In fact it was a little bit frightening. But they fought with expert timing. They were funky China men from funky Chinatown. They were chopping them up and they were chopping them down. It's an ancient Chinese art and everybody knew their part. From a feint into a slip, and kicking from the hip. Naruto appeared with an leg sweep that Kakashi jump and then Naruto jumped to match his jump and they started trading punches. Then blurred out of sight Aegean. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Those cats were fast as lightning. In fact it was a little bit frightening. But they fought with expert timing. There was funky Billy Chin and little Sammy Chung. He said here comes the big boss, let's get it on. We took a bow and made a stand, started swinging with the hand. The sudden motion made me skip now or into a brand new trip. Then they both appeared panting a little. Naruto changed stances to one Kakashi did not know and then charged Kakashi slow but at the last second speeded up incredibly and kicked Kakashi once of the ground, then he received a punch into the gut, sending him double over only to receive two more punches being lifted at least a foot higher each time. And then a kick to the side of the head and they both blurred out of existence. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Those cats were fast as lightning. In fact it was a little bit frightening. But they did it with expert timing. Repeat, make sure you have expert timing. Kung Fu fighting, had to be fast as lightning. Finally as the song ends Kakashi and Naruto both appear and Naruto turns to see Sasuke and Sakura standing there gaping and said, look in you pockets. Both seemed confused and reached into their pockets and found the bells. Naruto said, same time tomorrow Kakashi. Kakashi just nodded and pulled his hiate down before collapsing on the ground. Sasuke is at a loss for words and Naruto goes through his songs and starts walking away and Sasuke said, fight me. Naruto smirked and hit play and said, fine, and got into another fighting stance and the music started playing. As they got into a fighting stance the music said, fight for you right, fight for you life, mortal combat. And both Naruto and Sasuke charged and in one punch Sasuke was on the ground and Naruto said, flawless victory, and walked over picking Kakashi up and flame Shushin to the hospital. Sakura went over to Sasuke crying but then a female voice said, kiss him. Sakura looked around bequace it's not her inner self but did not see anyone. She said, who's there? The sweet voice said, I am you Gordian Angel. I gave Naruto the ability to beat Sasuke so you can have your way with him while he is asleep. Now kiss him. Sakura said. No. The voice said. Fine. I guess I will go and be Eno's guardian instead and help her get Sasuke. Sakura screamed. Wait. I will do it. The voice said. Good. Do it. And Sakura slowly bent down and kissed the Uchiha. The voice said. Now as payment for this you must be friends with Naruto and not hate him for hitting Sasuke or you will never be able to do this or anything else Aegean. Understand. Sakura stuttered. Yes. The voice said. Good. I will keep watch and if you disobey me I will know. Remember. Practice every chance you can when Sasuke is out so when you finally kisses you awake you will know it's true love. Also never be mean to your other teammate. He will save your life once. Sakura nodded and said anything else. She only heard silence. At the hospital assertion blonde was chuckling to himself as he walked out the hospital getting the info from his cage bun Shin Naruko his sexy no jutsu self. Once he made it outside he looked through the songs on his NPOD one more time finding the song he was looking for. He jumped up on the roofs and makes his way to the Hokage monument and hits play listening to the song as he stands looking over the village and the music starts to play. I'm so high. I can hear heaven, I'm so high, I can hear heaven. Oh but heaven, no heaven don't hear me. And they say that a hero could save us. I'm not gonna stand here and wait. I'll hold on to the wings of the eagles. Watch as we all fly away. Someone told me that love would all save us. But how can that be, look what love gave us. A world full of killing, and blood spilling. That world never came, and they say that a hero could save us. I'm not gonna stand here and wait. I'll hold on to the wings of the eagles. Watch as we all fly away. Hi I G H I G H. Now that the world isn't ending. It's love that I'm sending to you. It isn't the love of a hero. And that's why I fear it won't do. And they say that a hero could save us. I'm not gonna stand here and wait. 
I'll hold to the wings of the eagles. Watch as we all fly away. And they're watching us. Watching yous. They're watching us. Watching yous. As we all fly away. And they're watching us. Watching us. They're watching us. Watching us. As we all fly away. Yeah, yeah. And they're watching us. Watching us. They're watching us. Watching us. As we all fly away. Yeah, yeah. Whoa oh. As the music ended Naruto had his eyes closed and said, Watch me dad and Kyubi. I will protect this village and everyone in it. And he let the wind blow over him and silently stood there enjoying the peace. Unfortunately all good things must come to an end and ABNU landed behind him and said, The council wishes to see you. Demon. Naruto nodded and flamed Shushin away scarring the ABNU. When Naruto arrived he was greeted by the Hokage and his two main advisors as well as the entire council. Naruto was still in just his boxers making most of the council furious. Naruto looked at them and smirked and sighed, so what does the illustrious council of Konoha wish to see me for? I was enjoying my time on my lands this morning. Danzo said, shut up boy, we are here to discuss your disturbing the village this morning and your punishment. Naruto dropped all restrictions he had on his power and flashed his key which combined with the backlash was enough to scare the entire council. Naruto said channeling his demonic chakra into his voice, before any of you pissants try anything this morning you will listen to me. I am not the same Naruto Uzumaki you all pushed around as a child. In fact my name is not even Uzumaki. It's Kazama just like my father Arashi Kazama the Yandaimi. Second the effects of that genjustu were felt only on lands I own based on the laws of Konoha. Third I am also the grandson of Tsunade who is the granddaughter of the first Hokage and the grand niece of the second Hokage. Seeing as she is not in this village right now I am the current clan head of both her family and the Kazama family that adopted my father when he was placed in an orphanage for his protection. Based on that fact I also have multiple council seats in this council. If you would look at the charter of this village you would discover I also own everything from the south gate to the academy to the Hokage monument as it was written in the village charter. Now that I really pissed you off I have one last thing before I release you all. You know why I was chosen to stop the Ninetales. It's not just because my father could not ask another family to give the child. No it's because I was the only one who could contain it. Why you ask, this? And Naruto slammed his hand ajons the ground causing a tree to burst through the council chamber floor and right through the roof of the building. Naruto then released the key and put his power restrictors back on and smirked seeing the scarred look on everyone's face. Naruto said, so what do you want to see me about? Well, I will let you all think about what I said. Have fun pissants. And he flamed Shushin away. Now those who knew of Naruto being from the future were surprised when he took this course of action. Not only had he told the council basically to kiss his ass. His power spike was enough that it scarred the shit out of everyone in the entire village being so massive. Naruto was still pissed off after he went to walking through the streets of Konoha. Everyone seemed to be giving him wide berth of walkway. Naruto saw a figure walking toward him pissed and said, Gaki, what the hell was that about? Not only do you piss off the entire village but you get into a pissing contest with the council scaring the shit out of everyone in the village. Naruto ignored her and kept walking. She looked at him and said, What, no answer. Too good to talk to a friend. Here I thought you wanted to be special. Naruto stopped in his tracks and said, Trust Anko. Anko stopped and looked confused and said, What? Naruto said, I said trust. Do you know how hard it is to live a life where the people you want to be close to don't trust you? It's not bad enough my father had to curse me, but even after I tell the truth to those I trust and I expect the same thing from them but I no matter what I am never trusted. Anko looked at him and said, You are an idiot. Of course no one is going to trust you. You're a ninja. We make our living out of deception idiot. You know for someone who lived as much as you say you have you can be neve. Naruto looked at the sky and said, You know the last thing Kyubi told me before he died Anko. Anko said, What Gaki? Naruto said, He told me that I should never deny who I am. To do that would be betraying myself. You know what the sad thing is. I never had a chance to know who I am. I have always been what everyone already thinks I am. A monster, a demon, an idiot, 
a weakling, a dead last and a failure. I have had to fight for every ounce of respect I ever had. Do you have any idea what is like to wait for the people you trust to stab you in the back? Anko stood there quietly and said, Yeah kid, I do. But I also know something you seem to have forgot. Respect is earned not given. Naruto looked at her and sighed closing his eyes and said, I am tired Anko. Truth is I don't know what I truly want to accomplish. Anko looked at him and said, What makes you happy? Naruto was quiet for a moment and said, Having someone talk to me as an equal without looking at me with hate. Enjoying a meal with someone and not worry if I have been poisoned. To have the one thing I never actually had. A family. That is what would make me happy. The feeling of not being alone anymore. Anko said. So why do you try so hard to show everyone how much of a badass you were and give them one more reason to hate you and stay away from you? Naruto looked at her for a moment and said, You're right. I already blew this one and probably will get the leaf village destroyed because of my damn pride and arrogance. Anko said, You're going to start over Aegean, aren't you? Naruto nodded and said, Thank you. Anko said, What? Naruto said, I know what I need to do now and blowing my stack at the council did help clear my head. I have dealt with those assholes enough and learned enough laws to really piss them off. I have wanted to do that so much it felt good. I do have one thing I have always wanted to do. Anko said, what's that? Naruto said, you like torture right? Anko nodded her head slowly and Naruto said, fear is assertion guy the first want to have a little fun with before I start over Aegean. Anko said, what are you planning Gaki? Naruto said, how would you like a little revenge on Orochimaru? Anko grinned and said, I like you style Gaki. What do you have planned? Naruto said, meet me at the tower in the forest of death in two hours. Anko nodded and Naruto disappeared in a swirl of flames. Two hours later when Anko arrived at the tower in the forest of death the sight that grated her was not what she expected. The main battle arena had two trees growing out of the floor and she saw a gray-haired kid with glasses being held to both trees by vines. Anko walked into the room and said, What the hell? Naruto walked over and threw a glass he was drinking Ajons to wall shattering it and said, Meet Kabuto, Orochimaru's right-hand man. Kabuto said, I don't know what he is talking about. I have never met Orochimaru before. I was on my way to the hospital to work and he appeared out of nowhere and brought me here help. Naruto said, Anko, he says he never met Orochimaru before but check his neck. Kabuto paled as Anko walked over and saw a cursed seal and she said, never met him huh? Okay Gaki, you got my interest, what do you plan to do? Naruto said, well Kabuto here has a healing ability almost as good as mine. I was thinking we could play a little game. First one to leave a permanent scar on him wins the right to move on to the next form of torture. Anko smirked and said, I like you style Gaki, and pulled out a kuniya. Naruto smirked and also pulled out a kuniya. The next six hours screams could be heard coming from the forest of death but since everyone avoided it no one heard them. After it was over and Anko said, I can't believe you did that. Naruto smirked and said, me, I just carved our names into his back. You removed his manhood. Anko said, well, we did learn that was the one thing he could not grow back. Naruto nodded and said, I know what you mean. You pulled out his nails. I broke his knuckles. You removed them. I shattered his arms. You filled his muscles with venom. I broke his ankles. You removed teeth. Anko said, At least I like the way you finished him off. 100 exploding tags wrapped around a kuniya that you used the 1000 years of death with. Naruto smiled and said, at least we found out a little info about Orochimaru I can use. Anko sighed and said, So when are you going back to start over Aegean Gaki? Naruto's smile faded and said, Soon. I already used the only poison that can kill me and put it in my body before we started. I did not want to ask anyone to kill me to go back. It should finish me soon. Anko nodded and said, So what do you plan to do when you go back? Naruto said, I think I will work behind the scenes Aegean. Secretly get strong again. I don't know if I will do the disappearing act Aegean though. Even though I traveled some it was lonely. Anko said. So what about your clan? Naruto said. 
I only know three women I would like to have in my life. Sensiheim, Tamari Chan and you but I don't know how to get all three of you and do what needs to be done. I don't want to live without all three of you though. You each have a quality that is unique to you that makes my life more complete. Anko said, you seem to know how to get Kurenai and the Tamari girl. I think the only one who you don't really know how to get is me, huh? Naruto nodded and said, Tamari is an easy one to get. All I have to do is either arrange a marriage with her father or help Gara, but I hate going through the old man to do it. Once I actually meet her it is easy to get her to like me because I don't use her to get to her father or as a plaything. I see her as a person and let her know. Kurenai, is harder to get because guys are always trying to seduce her for her looks but if I show her how special she is to me I can do it. Also the fact I am interested in the real her helps. You, the only thing I really have to impress you is my drive to kill the Hebatem. I know you have a mask up to keep people from getting close and even with my lifetimes I never could get really close to share the pain I see in myself also. Anko nodded and sat a moment and said, when you go back there is three things you could do to impress me. Naruto looked at her surprised and she said, first, send me some white roses. They are my favorite but don't tell who they are from. The second thing will be harder for you to do but I have faith in you. When Orochimaru took me as an apprentice I had a locket with a picture of my parents and me. He took it and threw it into the chasm by the hot springs on the west side of town. I figure with your bloodline you might be able to get down there and return it to me. Naruto nodded and said, what's the third thing? Anko closed her eyes and said, do you know my middle name? Naruto shook his head no. Anko said, it's Sarah. Nobody knows it except you now. Not even Orochimaru. When you send me the flowers and the locket call me Sarahime. Nobody has called me that since I was five when my parents died. Don't reveal who you really are to me until you're this age Aegean though so I will take you serious. You can tell me about yourself in letters and stuff but don't tell your age and treat me special. Also put a code word that only you and I will know in case someone were to get the letters instead of me or something. Naruto started to cough a little blood now as the poison was finishing what it was to do. Anko looked at him sadly with a tear in her eye and said, One more thing Gaki. Explain to me in your letters the truth of who you are but not enough for me to figure out and tell me about how you are the last of your clan but make sure I know you are not an Uchiha. Also tell me about Kurenai and if you get the sand girl also so I don't think you're cheating. Tell Kurenai also so we can both get used to each other. And I want you to know I do like you. I have ever since our fight back a few years ago even though I did not know who you were. Naruto smiled at her and felt his eyes slowly closing. The last thing he felt before he died was a few tears hit his cheek and a soft kiss on his lips. Naruto blinked as he opened his eyes looking at a roof that he truly hated and said, this time I am doing it for myself. Not for the village, not for the old man. This time I am doing it for myself and I will also find myself. And with a new conviction he got out of bed and looked out the window and smiled a true smile and said, today the real Naruto Uzumaki Kazama shall be born. Naruto after getting dressed for the day he went and saved that same idiot who was about to be killed by a falling plant and sighed as he made his way to the Hokage's office. Naruto ignored everyone who tried to stop his as he walked right to the door. Two ABNU who were standing at the door went to draw a weapon and Naruto never looked at them and said, if you value your lives you will let me see the Hokage, as he walked past the two stunned guards who never dreamed a five-year-old kid would say that. By the time they recovered enough to move they fell to the ground as a pressure point was hit on each of their necks. Naruto walked into the Hokage's office ignoring the questioning look the Hokage was giving him. Naruto walked right to the picture of the Yandaimi and bit his thumb and smeared blood on it shocking the third Hokage. He reached in pulled out a scroll, tossing it to the third and said, long story short. I know who I really am and I know why you did what you did. I respect you for that old man but I am tired of being the village's plague. I got things to do and you can do what you want. I don't want it known who my father is yet so don't tell anyone. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Kazama. I don't really care if most of this village thinks I am Kayubi or not but I will be taking my family name when I am ready. I will be around sometime. Don't be surprised if you can't find me or I go missing for a week or two. I will be back. By the way. Use Kajbunchens to do your paperwork, 
and he turned to walk out. The third screamed, wait. After getting over the shock of little five-year-old Naruto come in until he knew the secret that only he knew and opening a safe that he did not know about but Naruto kept on walking he hanged into Asuma and went to the ally to meet Kurenai Aegean. Meanwhile back inside the Hokage Tower the third opened the scroll Naruto tossed him and it did in fact state Naruto was Arashi's son but what surprised him is when he saw Arashi's true mother was listed. He sighed not knowing what to do. He quickly called for ABNU to get some people for him. When Karena went to kiss Asuma kissed her back more passionately than ever and pressed the pressure point on her neck to send her into pleasure. She moaned at this and Naruto broke the kiss and said, Sensiheim. I am not Asuma, this is a henge, I won't tell you who I really am yet because you will be surprised when you find out who I am. I will tell you this, I am younger than you but to me age is meaningless. I have admired you from a distance but not because of your beauty but for you compassion and caring nature. When the time comes I will reveal the real me. Until then goodbye Sensiheim. And he flames Shushin away leaving a shocked Kurenai. Naruto appeared inside the forest of death and having already activated his bloodline he began rebuilding his home. Having done it before and knowing what to do he was able to finish most of it within a few hours. His new home was basically a two-story house but did not have any windows or inside walls. It was just a big house with two floors and the outside walls and roof. The finer things like furniture, electric, water, sewer amming other thing would take time but for now the basic house was built. It took most of his chakra to do this. His demon chakra helped but he would have to begin retraining his body. He sighed as he ate the fish he had a clone catch and cook. Naruto walked into his new home and said, this is going to be fun and opened a dimensional portal and pulled a scroll out of it and unsealed a bed. He then got out some paintbrush and ink and got to work on some seal. After he was done he laid down on the bed and said, Thank God Kayubi taught me how to put stuff in dimensional pockets. No matter when I am in time I can get stuff in or out of it. It helps not having to rebuy stuff. Ow oh well, this is going to be a fun week and went to bed not even concerned that the third Hokage had ten of his most trusted people out looking for Naruto. Naruto woke early the next day, quickly getting ready for the day he went and wrote out a scroll and sealed it and leafed Shushin back to the Hokage tower shocking many of the ninja who were fear to get their mission. Naruto walked up to the mission door office and said, I request a mission. The third said, Naruto, you're not a ninja so you can't ask for a mission. Also I would like to talk to you in private. Naruto said, You misunderstand me Hokage-sama. I do not want a mission. I wish to commission a mission. The Hokage blinked and said, And what would that mission be? Naruto said, I wish to pay for two S-class missions. I also request for the mission to be carried out by the same person. The Hokage said, S-class mission you say. You know they are expensive Naruto. I also would like to know what the missions are. Everyone in the room was listening in and Naruto said, they are both delivery missions. One is to Jiraiya of the Sanin and the other is to the case cage of Suna. The third scroll here is for Kakashi alone to read. The third blinked and said, would you mind explaining to me why you want that? Naruto said, all you need to know is that I want both missions carried out by Hitaki Kakashi and that if either of my scrolls are open besides the intended person the repercussions will be severe. Also he must wait until he receives an answer to both scrolls. As for the pay here, throwing a scroll on the table. There is two million dollars in that scroll. Now do you accept my missions or do I take my money and mission elsewhere? Naruto said ingering the looks everyone was giving him. The Hokage was shocked and saw everyone of the ninja in the mission room looking at him to see what he was going to do. The third said, Very well. I will accept your mission. I still wish to. He was cut off by Naruto leaf shushing away shocking everyone Aegean. Naruto appeared back at his home and began the task of rebuilding his home. The Hokage sighed and looked in the scroll and indeed did find the amount Naruto said. A Chunin said, Hokage-sama. What was that all about and how did that boy use a shushin that only Chunin or higher know? The Hokage looked up and said, Mizuki, I don't have to answer your questions now I have things to do so get back in line to wait for your mission. Mizuki nodded and got back in line filling this for later. The Hokage looked at the two scrolls Naruto had given him and the mission money trying to figure out what was going on. 
he continued handing out missions and around noon he finally got to the last scroll. He decided he would not send them out until he got answers. The next day Naruto got ready for the day and brought out more scrolls with stuff he has for his home. He then created some kajbunshans to work on the house and he hanged into his diskwise of Arashi and started getting things he needed for his home. Food, bathroom supplies, things of that nature. Stuff you don't really want to stock up on. As he was walking through the village he saw a group of villagers gathered outside his old apartment. Carefully he slowly walked closer to listen to what the group was there for. You mean the demon has not been here today? Where could he be? I heard he attacked the Hokage. I heard he used his demon power to attack some ABNU yesterday. I say we find and kill him. Naruto said, Pardon me friends. If you're talking about the blonde with whiskers I saw him sneaking into the women's side of the hot springs on the west side of town now. The group which was all men screamed, let's get the demon, and charged for the hot spring. Naruto turned and saw a woman he was hoping to see standing on the corner of the street looking at him and said, you know I should have you taken to the Hokage for doing that to the Gaki. The kid has a hard enough life without assholes making it tougher. Naruto said, I would agree if I did not just set those idiots up to get the shit beat out of them. I happen to know that most of the Inazakas visit the hot springs today and they don't like perverts. Also the kid does not live here anymore. He has a new home hidden away from most of the village. The woman said, If what you say is true then I like your style Gaki. By the way I know you don't really look like that. I can tell it's an advance henge. Also, how do you know where the kid is now? The Hokage was looking for him yesterday and no one could find him. Naruto nodded and leaned it against the wall and said, I know where he is but I respect his privacy. You're right. This is an advance henge that can't be dispelled by anyone but me and even a Sharingan can't see through it. I have my reason for doing this but you don't need to worry about that. I will tell you I am not an enemy of the leaf. Anko walked over to him and said, You know I have to take you in since you're not allowed to be in a henge in this village without permission from the Hokage and since I don't know who you are Gaki I can't trust your words. Naruto nodded and said, I understand but I won't be going this time. Take care Sarahime. And he flamed Shushin away leaving a very shocked Anko. Naruto arrived at his home and saw his cage bun shins have been making great progress on his home. He sighed and sat down and said, I am glad chakra control is based on how smart you are. If I did not have such good control from everything I would never be able to henge and Shushin like this. Even cage bunshins and my bloodline are draining. I need to get my reserve back up quickly. He looked at the stuff he had bought and the stuff still needing to be put in place or built. The kitchen was nearly ready. The bathroom was done and all seals for both rooms were finished. The seals to provide electricity and water to the house had been done so basic necessities were done. The next day Naruto went into town dickwised as Arashi Aegean and walked into the Yamanko flower shop. A man with blonde hair Naruto recognized as Ino's dad said, Welcome to the Yamanko flower shop. How can I help you today? Naruto said, I would like to have some flowers ordered and delivered. The man nodded and said, Can I ask why you're in a henge? Naruto said, It's because the ladies that I want to send the flowers to do not know it is me that is sending them and I want to get both their attentions before I reveal who I really am. Inoichi said, I understand but you know the Hokage has already sent word to all Junins in the village to capture you right. Naruto said, I figured he would considering I display skills no one in the village has seen before. I am not going to cause any trouble but I would like to order my flowers before we get to official business. Inoichi said, you know I can't do that. Naruto sighed and said, if I can give you some proof I am a member of the leaf village would you let me get my flowers and leave saying I escaped. Inoichi said, why would I do that? Naruto walked over to a set of flowers and said, growth and the flowers grew dramatically. Naruto turned and said, I am the great-great-grandson of the Shodaim Hokage. I am also the last of my clan that can carry on my family line. I don't want the people of this village to know who I am because the village has lost my respect. I won't reveal who I really am until my grandmother and grandfather arrive. I am not hostile to the village because if I were the village would not be standing. Catch! 
and he threw a scroll flame Shushin away leaving a shocked Inoichi who thought it was an attack but instead was a scroll. He looked around the shop and opened the scroll and was surprised by what was inside. It was an order for white roses and jasmines but what surprised him even more was the note to the Hokage and who the flowers were for as well as the payment. He quickly closed the shop and went to the Hokage's office. When he got there he saw the third was at his desk and said, Pardon the interruption Hokage-sama. The third looked up and said, What is it Inoichi? Inoichi said, Um, the gentleman you asked everyone to be on the lookout for came to my shop a little while ago. The third nodded and Inoichi said, He wanted some flowers ordered and all and he showed and told me something before escaping I think you should know. He claims he is the great-great-grandson of the Shodem Hokage and from the display of manipulating plants I say it's a good chance. He also said he is not a threat to the village but said that we have lost his respect. He said he won't reveal who he is until his grandfather and grandmother arrive. The third looked at the scrolls on his desk and said, I see. I believe I know who he is now. If he is who I think he is then I know why he is in Henge. Did he say anything else? Inoichi said, he said he was not hostile to the village because if he was it would not be standing. He said he was the last one who could carry on his family line. The third closed his eyes and said, who were the flowers for? Inoichi said, actually that surprised me the most. Kurinai and Anko. He said he was in Henge because he was not ready to reveal who he was yet to either of them. The third coughed and sat up at his desk and said, thank you Inoichi. Go ahead and fill the orders if he paid and any further orders. Don't worry about stopping him for now. If I am correct who he is then I believe what he said is true. Also don't tell anyone about him being the first descendant. Inoichi nodded and left in the third side before sending a message for Kakashi. An hour later Kakashi arrived at the Hokage office and said, You asked to see me Hokage-sama. The third nodded and said, I have a mission for you. Kakashi said, Does this have anything to do with Naruto? The third said, Yes. I assume you heard he requested a mission earlier this week. Kakashi nodded behind his ABNU mask and said, I don't know how he knows me though. The third said, neither do I but he left a scroll for you to read, and he handed it to Kakashi. Kakashi opened it and began to read and after a few moments said, you have some explaining to do, dropping all pretenses of respect. The third blinked and said, let me guess, he told you who he really is. Kakashi said, among other things, why did you not tell me? The third said, I did it for his best interest. Kakashi slammed his fist into the table and said, his best interest, bullshit. I have seen what he has been through and his best interest was thrown to the side the moment you changed his name. The third sighed and said, I admit I made some mistakes in dealing with him. I did the only thing I could think of to save his life. Kakashi sighed and said, give me the scrolls, I will take the missions. The third said, what exactly are they Kakashi? Kakashi sighed and said, I don't know. It just told me who he is and that he needs those scrolls delivered and wait for a response to both. He said I would be the only one Jiraiya would halfway listen to and he does not want too many people to know who he is yet. He also said I won't be able to find him because he has built a home somewhere only one person besides himself goes. The third sighed and said, I wish he would tell me what's going on. Kakashi blinked and said, you did not tell him who he was did you? The third said, he walked into my office this week after knocking out my two guards and opened a safe I knew nothing about that I assume his father installed and then said he knew who he was and knew why I did what I did but said he was not going to be this village's plague anymore and walked out after giving me a scroll from his father. I don't know how he found out because I thought I was the only one who knew. Kakashi said, perhaps he will tell you if you see him. I got some missions I need to do so I can get back and talk to him. The third nodded and said, You don't happen to know if he has ever met Anko or Kurinai before do you? Kakashi looked confused and said, No, why? The third said, Oh nothing. I just was wondering because someone ordered some flowers for both of them and I thought it might have been him. I guess I have been reading too many of Jiraiya's books. Kakashi nodded and said, I should be back in a month. Naruto gave me a list of places to look for Jiraiya. I wonder how he knows him. The third said, he doesn't as far as I know. Perhaps his dad left instructions for him to meet Jiraiya or something. Kakashi nodded and left leaving a confused Hokage. Kurinai had just arrived at a dango stand to with her friend Anko when Inoichi walks up and said, well, 
I don't know how but you both seem to have attracted an admirer of sorts. Both Kurinai and Anko looked up and said, Huh. Inoichi pulls out two different flower arrangements and handed them to the ladies. Anko said, I wonder what Sumgaki is trying to pull, as she took the flowers and sat them on the table acting like she did not care but took the scroll and began to read. Kurinai also took her flowers but smelled them and then took the scroll attached and read it and blushed as she read it. Inoichi said, So what's he say? Kurinai looked up from the scroll and said, You actually met him. What does he look like? Anko seemed to be listening in and Inoichi said, Truthfully I don't know. He matches the description Anko gave for the guy in the henge. He still had it on and managed to escape before I could take him in. Anko growled and said, I am going to kill the Gaki. Kurinai said, What does he say to you? Anko said, He just tried to tell me he want to become something special in his life and he is the heir to a forgotten clan and he has been watching me for a while and wants to show his feelings for me. He also says that he has also gotten to like you and one other from another village he is hoping to get to know and perhaps have a relationship with. Sound like a pervert to me. Kurinai said, You think it might be Kakashi? He is a pervert. Inoichi said, I can guarantee it's not Kakashi. Both women looked at him and said, how can you be sure? Inoichi looked around and said, simple, Kakashi can't control plants. Both women blinked and said, huh. Inoichi said, he claimed he is related to the first Hokage and the third said he thinks he knows who he is but won't tell me who but you did not hear that from me. Both women nodded and Inoichi said, well, I got to get back to my shop. I will be glad when Ino is old enough so I don't have to close shop. After he left Kurinaya looked at Anko and said, what do you think? Anko said, whoever he is has a date with my snakes. Kurinaya snorted and said, I can't believe I did not recognize he had a henge on when he looked like Asuma. Anko said, you think it might be him? Kurinaya said, not if what Inoichi said is true. Do you think he is a descendant of the first? Anko said, I don't know but I am have another question on my mind. Kurinai said, and that would be. Anko said, he called me something nobody but my parents have ever called me. I want to know how he found out. Kurinai nodded and said, what do you think of the flowers? Somehow he knew my favorites. Anko said, I don't like flowers so I don't have a preference, looking around lying. Kurinai said, so if he ask you out you going to go. Anko said, please. Gaki would have to do better than a few weeds to impress me. Kurinai said, I might, just to find out why he would flirt so openly like this. Anko sighed and said, I got to go. Ibiki said he wants me to work on some new intimidation stuff. Kurinai nodded and said, take care and if you hear from him let me know. Anko nodded and said, if Gaki's smart he would avoid me unless he wants to die, and left. Kurinai did also walking by a man with blonde hair and black eyes reading a book on her way out. The owner walked over and the man said, Hi buddy. I heard from a friend of mine that this is the best dango shop in all of Konoha. The owner said, Whoever your friend is must have great taste as it's true. The blonde said, Name's Arashi and I am a businessman of sorts. I travel a lot and have some unique taste and I was wondering if you might be interested in a sort of business deal. The owner said, not really but I will listen since no one else is here right now. By the way, the name is Leo. Irashi smiled and said, nice to meet you Leo and I think you might like my offer. I don't really want to do anything to change your restaurant except pay in advance for a few items to be in stock so when I am in town I can have it. My offer is 100,000 a year if you would just carry six items. Three different fruit and three wines that's it. I like to relax with dango fruit and wine but it hard to find these items in villages this far away from Cloud. Leo said, well we don't really have trade routes with Cloud so I don't think it's possible even though you have a great deal. Irashi said, that's not a problem. Even though the wine I want is common in Cloud it is not made there. In fact I have a supplier who can deliver them. I just want to make a contact here to supply it since I am planning on spending a lot more time in the Leaf Village. Leo looked at him and said, well that doesn't sound too bad but the 100,000 a year you cost me if I have to store the items for any period of time. Irashi said, I understand perhaps I can make it better for you. Every year for four years you go with keeping the item in stock I will give you a bonus at the end of the fourth year of 200,000 for any inconvenience. Leo seemed to be in thought and said, deal. 
How long would it take to set up the supply line? Irashi said, I should have it set up within two months. Leo nodded and said, Sounds good, partner. Irashi said, Partner. Well, if you insist. Leo said, Yeep. I was actually in a little financial problem since my regular supplier sold out last month. Irashi nodded and said, Well, it's getting late. I will draw up the contract and bring it by later this week. Good night. And he got up and finished his drink, walking off. After he made it outside, he walked toward a side street and then down an alley and stopped and said, Your detection skills are getting better, Sensiheim. A genjutsu dropped, revealing Kurenai at the end of the alley and said, Yours are also good. So tell me, when will I actually get to see the real you? Arashi said, Someday, but I want to prove to you and Anko I am not just some pervert or stalker. As far as what I was doing back, there was a coincidence that you were there. Isn't that right, Sarahime? Turning his head slightly to Anko at the other end of the ally. Anko said, So, Gaki, what do you plan to do? Arashi changed Henge to brown hair and blue eyes and said, Well, to answer that, I have figured out a few things and I plan to do them to impress you both. I can't wait for you to meet the real me, but for now, I will just leave a parting gift. Pulls something out of his pocket and sets it on the ground and disappears in a swirl of flames. Anko looked at Kuranai and said, How does he do that? Kuranai said, I don't know. Walks over and picks up what he left. Anko walks over and gasps. Kuranai looked at Anko and sees her slowly reaching for the item. As she touches it, a single tear escapes her eyes. Kuranai asks, Are you okay, Anko? Anko just nods and said, My mother's locket. Orochimaru threw it into a chasm on the other side of town. Even with all my skills now I could not get to the bottom to get it. As she holds the locket close to her heart. Kurinai smiles a small smile as Anko opens it and shows the picture of Anko as a little girl with her parent. They both stand there in silence for a few minutes and Anko whispers, Thank you, before they part for the evening. On a rooftop a little ways away from the two Arashi says, You're welcome, and flames Shushin home. Four days later at Tsuna, one Hitaki Kakashi was standing in front of the case cage in his ABNU uniform and said, Thank you for seeing me Kazakegasama. The case cage said, Of course ABNU. So what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Has something happened that the Hokage needs to draw to my attention? Kakashi said, Honestly, I don't know. I was given a mission to deliver a scroll to you and wait for a response. As he holds out a scroll. The case cage looked at it and said, Very well. And he takes the scroll opening it and begins reading it. After a few moments he puts the scroll down and looked at it a few minutes and said, I will arrive at that time to allow a meeting. Correspondence will be allowed and I accept the gift he has given. I will also not mention it to anyone besides my family. Tell him that I agree to his stipulations. Kakashi nodded and said, I will tell him when I see him. Kakashi started to leave and the case cage said, You don't know what delivered do you? Kakashi stopped and turned and said, No case cage sama. The case cage said, Tell me ABNU. Do you know this Kazama? Kakashi stiffened and said, A little sir. My duties keep me away from the village mostly. The case cage nodded and said, Do you know if he is a good person? Kakashi blinked behind his mask and said, I believe so. The case cage said, Good. Dismiss and safe journey. Kakashi nodded and left heading for his next destination. Back in Konoha the next day Anko was walking through the forest of death holding the locket she received earlier this week when she felt some chakra coming from inside the forest. Deciding to investigate she quickly used her stealth to travel deep into the forest to the side farthest from the village but also the most dangerous. She followed the chakra source for about half an hour and when she arrived at an area she felt the source from she was shocked because of the sight that grated her over 500 cage bunshins were waterwalking and running up and down trees. She recognized the cage bunshins as the Kayubi kid. Suddenly she saw something fall into the clearing and destroy a couple of clones that were balancing on kunias. She looked up and nearly had a heart attack. Sitting in the trees was a huge mansion. She made sure she was concealed and held her chakra as low as possible as she looked around. She watched and soon saw one of the clones that was different. She looked at it and watched as 25 new kajbunshans appeared around that one. She then watched as the 25 clones changed into different people and take up different fighting stances. She saw one of herself in the group and became confused as she watched herself get into the serpent stance. 
The one she noticed was different before got into a fighting stance she did not recognize and then the 25 clones that were people she knew or did not know began to fight. The battle was deadly. The techniques she saw them use was something she never would have expected. The one of Asuma used trench knives and even had a wind affinity. The one of Kakashi surprised her the most as it used Chidori. Kuranaya used the treebind of death. Hiyadi used the crescent moon style of sword fighting. Her clone used the hidden snake hand. She watched the battle as each and every move was countered by the Naruto she assumed now was the real one. She then got a surprise that she would never have dreamed. The kid used the fourth prized jutsu Rasengan and Hiraishin. Even though she had never actually seen them she had read enough about them to know that's what they were. She watched as some of the weaker fighters were taken out. The guy clone and a mini version of him she could have sworn open the gates. The kid was receiving wounds but kept on fighting. A clone of Itachi said something that made Anko puzzled. I will kill you Kyubi just like I killed my clan. Soon the 25 clones that was had started were down to two. Anko looked at the two and were surprised by who they were. What happened next made her blood run cold. The two clones that was standing there were Tsunade and Jiraiya. Another clone appeared and this time Orochimaru stood there. She listened as his clone began to speak. Kukakukek Narutoken. I see you are still too weak to kill me. How can you hope to protect the women you love from me? Naruto looked at him and his eyes changed red and said, I will kill you Orochimaru. I will do it for all the people's lives you have ruined and are planning on ruin. But most of all I will stop you for Sarahime. And Naruto suddenly jumped onto a tree branch and grabbed the tree branch causing it to attack Orochimaru. Anko who saw all of this was frozen in place. She then heard the other two Sanin clones speak. Naruto. Why do you fight for a village that curses the day you were born? Tsunade said. Jiraiya said, come on kid. Do you really think with everything you do you will ever find happiness in this village? Naruto said, shut up grandfather. I heard it from you before. And you grandmother. First putting dad up for adoption just to keep from upsetting the Hokage. Please, you claim it was for his protection but I know the truth. Then never telling him who you were. I lived most of my lives alone and that pain is impossible to understand. The loneliness of not knowing if you even had a family and then find out one is out writing books and the other gambles and drinks. I swear when I restore my clan I will not only love my wife's but my children. And he charged all three Sanins. Attacking each as they used their individual skills. Anko's breath was caught in her throat as she watched him stand toe to toe with the Sanins. She gasped when she saw her former master use a ceiling on his stomach. What happened next would forever be in her memory. Naruto slowly stood up and looked at Orochimaru and said, To late Orochimaru. You can't seal what's not there. Kayubi's been dead for a long time now. Now join him. And Naruto flamed Shushin around the battlefield attacking from different areas. Sadly all of the Sanins still stood strong. Finally Naruto fell to the ground face first. He rolled himself over but just laid there and passed out. Anko was about to jump down but something she heard earlier made her stop. But most of all I will stop you for Sarahime. She then thought of the flame Shushin attacks he used in the controlling the trees. This Gaki was the one who been flirting with her and Kuranai. She started to get angry at that until she heard him still on the ground speak. I am trying Sarahime. You told me you liked white roses and I already got your locket for you. I will get strong enough to protect you from him. At least I have not screwed this life yet. I hope everything works out. I am getting tired of repeating lives. You still look beautiful to me. Sensiheim also. I know the old man is already suspicious of me but I don't care. He did not trust me before so why should he trust me now? You always have such good advice Sarahime. First you tell me to learn about all the women I would like to live my life with. I tried that and found three goddesses that I would be honored to grow old with. There's you and Sensiheim and then there's Tamariheim. It sucks being this young Aegean. I have the body of an almost six year old but the mind of someone many years older. I gave up a long time ago keeping track. Well I guess I better get started Aegean. I will be glad to be a Gen and Aegean so I can finally show you my true self. I hope you're safe and happy my Himes. And he got up and started to walk toward a tree to get back to his house only to pass out and all of his clones disappear. Anko stood in place where she was as she listened to him. She was thinking, Kyubi's dead. Grandfather, grandmother, repeating lives. What the hell is going on? 
Anko looked around and saw Naruto was still passed out and jumped out of her hitting spot and walked over picking the kid up and then tree climbing up to the mansion and walked inside and nearly dropped Naruto right then and there. The sight that greeted her was amazing. She looked around and saw a couch and put Naruto down on it. She then started to look around. She saw pictures of herself older than she is now with different people. She saw a picture of Tsunade and Jiraiya with some kid who looked like Naruto and after seeing the whiskers she was sure was him. She saw the same thing with Kurenai with what looked like a genin team. She soon found a similar picture of Naruto in an orange jumpsuit with a pink-haired girl and what looked like an Uchiha and Kakashi. Anko said, do you ever show your face Kakashi and what the hell is with the orange jumpsuit? It practically screams kill me. A voice from the couch said, no he doesn't and the jumpsuit is all the stores would allow me to buy Anko. They do after all want the Kayubi brat to die. Anko turned and saw Naruto sitting up slowly. He turned to her looking down and said, so how much did you see? Anko looked at him and said, everything from the battle royal to the Sanenfest and I heard you afterwards. Naruto sighed and turned slowly and said, I guess you got questions and want answers. Anko said, you can say that but I am not the only one. Naruto nodded and said, do you think you can find this place Aegean? Anko said, yeah why? Naruto sighed and said, tonight 7 o'clock. Bring Kurenai and the Hokage. Don't tell them what it's about but make sure you're not followed. I will make dinner and answer everything. Anko said, why should I believe you Gaki? Naruto said, I will remove your curse seal. Anko was stunned and Naruto slowly got up and winced as he was still hurt from the spar and walked over to her and said, also I always keep my promises. Even when they kill me. Anko seemed to think it over and said, all right Gaki. I will trust you for now. And she disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Naruto sighed and said, damn it. I was not ready for this, and began preparing for tonight. Anko arrived back inside the village and went to the Hokage office. When she arrived she saw the Hokage sitting in his chair but a man she recognized as Uchiha Itachi was standing there. Anko knocked and Itachi turned and said, Hello Anko. How are you today? Anko said, Fine, a flash of what the Itachi clone said made her nervous a little. If Naruto really did know the future as she suspected then Itachi would kill the Uchiha clan. She filed that away for later. The Hokage said, Itachi. I want you to see if you can find Naruto. You have the best chance with your tracking abilities. Anko said, actually sir, that's what I came here to tell you. I saw him today and he wants to talk to you later today. The third said, really and where did you see him? Anko remember the Gen and team picture of Naruto and saw the memorial stone so she said, I saw him on a training ground near the memorial stone and he asked me to relay the message. The third nodded and said, never mind Itachi, thank you anyways. Itachi nodded and said, of course Hokage-sama, and he left in a leaf shushin. Anko sighed and the third said, so why did you lie? Anko said, I really did meet him but not where I said. I saw and heard some things today that has me questioning Itachi loyalty. That's why I lied. Naruto said he wanted you, me and Kurenai at his mansion tonight at 7. The third blinked and said, mansion. What mansion? Anko said, he built a mansion inside the forest of death. The third chuckled and said, no wonder we could not find him. Anko nodded and said, there is something else. He said Kayubi's dead and the seal's gone. The third paled and coughed at this and said, anything else? Anko said, I think the rest should wait until tonight. I would tell your family you won't be home till late because I think this is going to be long night. The third nodded and said, why are you so open about this Anko? You hardly trust anyone and the fact you are basically putting all your faith in Naruto is something I have never seen before. Anko thought for a moment and said, I seen that kid do something even I could not do. The third said, and that is. Anko said, you will have to see for yourself. The third said, right. I will meet you at the tower at the forest of death at 6.30. Anko turned to leave and stopped and said, I have a personal request Hokage-sama. The third looked at her and motioned for her to continue. Anko said, don't tell anyone about where we are meeting or have anyone follow us. The kid seems like he's been betrayed more times than I have and his trust is only so far. The third sighed and said, I understand. Finding out what he did will do that. Anko nodded and left to find Kurenai. Anko found Kurenai at the hot springs. When she got there she decided to relax also. After getting undressed she went into the water and sat by Kurenai. 
Kuranaya said, I thought you would be training today. Anko said, I was until I met our mutual friend today. Kuranai blinked and said, Really? Did you find out anything? Hana Inazaka A. Jenin said, Really Kuranai and Anko? You both have a guy you both like. Who is he? Kuranai said, It's not like that. This guy is playing the whole mysterious person thing and has been flirting with both of us. Anko said, He wants to meet us tonight at 7. The two other women besides Hannah and the two Himes looked at them and Hannah said, Really? So where does he plan to meet you? Anko said, I found his home and he is going to prepare dinner for us and tell us everything we want to know. Kuranaya looked at Anko and said, Exactly how did you find him Anko? Anko said, I found him when he was destroying a training grounds. The Gaki could probably beat most of the village if he really wanted to. Kuranai sighed and said, Learn anything new about him. Anko smirked and said, I saw what he really looks like. Kuranai sat straight up shocking everyone and said, Tell me. Anko shook her head no and said, I will tell you this. Don't let your first impression fool you. Kuranai sighed and said, I hate your cryptic games. Anko said, Meet me at my place at 6.15, Kuranai said, But you said he wanted to see us at 7 inches. Anko said, You will find out why later, and got up to leave. Hannah looked at Anko and said, Are you going to tell us anything else? Anko placed her hand on the locket and said, Nope, and turned to leave. Kuranai sighed and Hannah said, Details. Kuranai cursed Anko and said, All I really can tell you is that he says he has admired us both for some time and that he is a good kisser. Hannah said, And how do you know that? Kuranai blushed and said, I saw who I thought was Asuma walk into an ally and I went to flirt like we sometimes do. Turned out it was this mysterious guy in an advance henge that can't be dispelled. Trust me I tried. He has shown up in three different deshuzes and has sent us flowers and recovered that locket Anko said Orochimaru threw into that ravian near here. Hannah said, Sounds like he is going all out to impress you both. Kuranai said, Seems like it though I wonder why he really is hiding who he is. Hannah said, Perhaps it's someone who was too shy to tell you. Kuranai said, Maybe. As she relaxed thinking about later. Later that evening at 6.30 Anko and Kuranai arrived at the tower in the forest of death and Kuranai said, What are we doing here Anko? Anko said, We are meeting his other guest. Kuranai said, Who? The third walked up from behind them and said, That would be me. Kuranai said, Hokajasama. Surprised. He smiled at her and said, Shall we Anko? Anko nodded and began leading them to Naruto's home. When the three arrived at the mansion the sun was just setting and they could still see the place. Kuranai and the third were in awe by the place and Anko was a little but not as much as originally. The mansion was two stories tall and could probably hold 50 people comfortably. After they climbed the tree they walked to the front door and it opened and a man in a butler suit was standing there. The third chuckled at this and said, That has got to be the second best way to use kajbunshans I have ever seen. The butler said, of course Hokegasama. Paperwork is the best way. The third said, Indeed, and thanks for the tip now might I inquire as to where our host is. The butler said, He will be down in moments and dinner will be ready shortly. He left orders to see if you needed any drinks and said to make yourself at home. The third nodded and Anko said, I think before he gets here you should look at his pictures in the living room. Might make what he says more believable. Kuranai and the third shot her a confused look and followed her into the living room. Looking around raised several questions for both the third and Kuranai. The butler returned a few minutes later and said, Dinner is served and your host is waiting on you. They all nodded and followed the clone into a dining room and two more butlers were there and pulled out the chairs for Anko and Karania. A voice from behind them said, I am glad you arrived safely and I know you three have many questions. I promise you I won't lie about anything. And the 15-year-old version of Naruto arrived wearing a pair of black pants and a white dress shirt. The third looked at him and said, Why are you still in a henge Naruto? Naruto said, I will explain that but I would like to tell you my story. Kuranai said, Naruto, as in Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto sighed and said, Yes and no senseiheim. Kuranai said, What do you mean? Naruto said, my real name is Naruto Kazama and I am the son of Arashi Kazama the Yandaimi Hokage. I am also the grandson of Tsunade and Jiraiya of the Sanins. I may look like I am only six years old but I am a lot older than that. 
The third said, What do you mean Naruto? Naruto took a sip of wine and said, When I was dying from a chidori from my teammate Sasuke Uchiha after he defected from the village to go to Orochimaru the Shinigami came and was going to take me to the other side. Kayubi would have been released because we had not merged enough to drag his soul to the other side. I was 13 at the time. Kayubi made a deal with the Shinigami and he accepted it. I would be given one of the heavenly powers of the Phoenix and allowed to go back to the age of five and try to correct the mistakes that were made in my life by myself and others. Kayubi gave me all of his power also as part of the deal. Each time I go back I keep all the knowledge I gain and I have tried many things to fix the mistakes. Everyone was stunned by this and the third said, I find that hard to believe Naruto and also the fact of what you said about Kayubi also is hard to believe. Naruto raised his shirt and channeled chakra and said, You and I both know old man that the Kayubi seal would always show up even through a henge and as you can see I don't have it. It does not matter if you believe me or not. It's the truth. Anyways I will answer some question but certain things have to happen that can't be changed or all my knowledge is basically useless. Kurinai said, What do you mean? Naruto sighed and said, A tragedy will befall Konoha within a month and I could tell you who will do it and why but it has to happen. I have tried every way to stop it but it always either results in even more deaths or the entire city going into a civil war. Anyways, Sarahime, show me your cursed seal. Anko nodded and pulled her shirt to the side a little and the third said, What are you going to do Naruto? Naruto walked behind her and said, Removing it and placed his hand over her cursed seal and started to channel demon chakra into it and Anko screamed out in pain but the pain soon was replaced with pleasure as Naruto then hit the same pressure point he hit on Kurenai and made Anko have pleasure like never imagined and the seal burned away only leaving a scar. Naruto walked over and sat down and said, I am sorry for tricking you Sensiheim and Sarahime but if you would have known I was a kid you would have ignored me flat out on principle and I wanted to try and show you both I do care about you. The third said, what was the two scrolls Kakashi went to deliver? Naruto snickered and said, One was to try and work things out with the third person I wrote to the lovely ladies here about as a possible relationship with. I sent a potential political marriage and all but I set it up where it's all her choice. The third nodded and said, Do I need to worry about anything concerning this? Naruto said, You will receive scrolls from Suna that will need to be sent to me. Other than that not until my age groups chunin exams. The third said, and the other one. Naruto smiled and said, family reunion. Kurinai said, what do you mean? Naruto said, I want him to come train me and we are going to look for Tsunade I will be back in time for my age group graduation. The third said, you know I have to authorize that. Naruto said, actually you don't. I am a clan member and you can't interfere with clan business. Also as one of the founding clans of Konoha I have the right to leave the village any time I please so even if I were a ninja of the village I could not be considered a missing nin unless my clan said I was or I did so in an action that could be considered hostile. Also I should state something. I own everything from the south gate to the Hokage Mountain and all the way to the Academia's order by the charter of this village. That was the second reason I built my home here. The other is only skilled ninja could find it and make it to it. Kurinai said, what, do you mean you own the entire village that way? Naruto said, yes, the laws of Konoha says any land that is assigned to a clan that was a founder of Konoha owns that land and can never be sold, given, or taken by the council, citizens, or Hokage. Even if someone puts homes or buildings on those lands they own them also. My family. The family of the first wanted the village to grow so while other clans held their lands mine allowed homesteaders to set up on our land to build the village. The only clan besides mine that is affected by this is the Hyuga and Uchiha. They own basically a triangle from where their two lands meet and end and go to the academy where they run into mine. The other clans have kept exactly what they were given. No more and no less. The third said, what do you plan to do about that Naruto? Naruto said, absolutely nothing unless the village hurts my family or friends. The third sighed and said, thank you for not getting revenge. Naruto chuckled and Anko said, what? Naruto said, in my last life I did do something just for the hell of it. I placed a genjutsu on the Hokage Mountain and had the Hokage's lipsing to some songs while I danced throughout the street in only my boxers and a pimp hat and cane to, I am to sexy. 
I also beat Kakashi during our genin test to the Song Kung Fu fighting and then the council tried to kill me so I basically told every single one of them off as only I couldn't even made Danzo, that fucking traitor, piss his pants. I never had so much fun. Ow oh, well. Everyone imagined that an Anko and Kurinai blushed a little and the third chuckled and said, I wish I could have seen that and what do you mean Danzo a traitor? Naruto sighed and said, he supplies Orochimaru with information on individual ninja. Mission status, skill levels, teammates. I know he does it to the rookie nine and guy's team. Before that I don't know. If I had not caught his son Sai giving the info I would never have believed it. Anyways, you should also know that the council can't kill, get rid of or hurt me anymore as I am the current clan head of my family and I also have at least four different seats on the council. Kurinai said, what do you mean? Naruto said, all Hokage and descendants of Hokages have one seat given to them so I have three from the one, two, and fourth Hokage. As a founding clan I also have one seat and is the grandson of Jeriaya as he is the last of his clan who has a permanent seat on the council. Now I know Tsunade will be Hokage so her seat will be open and until Jiraiya dies he will have his so that means the other four are mine and whoever I have is my wives since I have a bloodline and also a clan I have to have more than one wife. I found three that I hope someday to earn the right to marry but my plans changed when Anko found me today. I will understand if either you Senseiheim or Sarahime do not want me now that you know the truth but I ask that I can write you while I am away and at least let me earn your friendship. I will tell you this. I have never been past a kiss with any woman. I am saving myself for a true marriage so you don't think I am just trying to get with you for that. And the pressure point I hit I learned from Tsunade how to manipulate the massage points I learned in Cortesian classes. Karania blinked and said, What the hell were you taking a Kunoichi only class? Naruto smirked and said, Sexy no jutsu. And he changed into a beautiful blonde hair woman in a dress and said, I have busted a few slave and prostitution rings before, in a silky female voice before turning back to his hanged male form. Kurinai blinked and Anko said, how exactly could you do that if it's just a henge? Naruto smirked and said, do any of you know why you can't dispel my henges? Kurinai said, I have actually wondered that. Naruto said, it's bequace of Kyubi's influence on my body. Even though he's gone I have his power so when I use the advance henge I actually become what you see. My female version actually is completely female. Hormones and all. God I hated periods. Everyone blinked and blinked Aegean and the third had to ask, does that mean you could become pregnant? Naruto said, Tsunade thought so when I volunteered to go in with Ino to bust a prostitution ring. She made take the classes and even taught me about protection and birth control. It gave me a new respect for women. Anko said, Gaki, why the hell would you want to be female anyways? Naruto said, my first version was nude so I could knock out perverts. In fact it was that technique that made me a genin in the first place. I was tricked by Mizuki to steal the forbidden skull and I knocked out the Hokage with it and I learned Kajbunshin in a few hours. I still have trouble with simple bunshins because my reserves are so big. Nobody ever taught me chakra control exorcisis so I never learned to control it until two months into me being a genin. The third said, how much of the scroll do you know? Naruto said, if you're worried about the sealing that dad did I know it but as I am a seal master also I have made my own seals that make it look like a simple exploding note. The third paled and Naruto said, I know 22 of the 23 techniques on it and can do 21 of them. I never did learn the bloodline sealer because if you do it to anyone after one year old it kills them. I never learned it so I would never be tempted to use it on Itachi or Sasuke. The one I learned but never tried to do was the sealing dad did. So, will you allow me a chance to write you both at least? Kurinai sat quietly and said, I will give you a chance for my friendship but anything past that I won't promise anything. Anko said, you got my friendship Gaki when you got my locket. I do have one question though, does the tragedy you mentioned earlier have anything to do with Itachi? Everyone saw Naruto flinch and he said, yes. The third said, what is going to happen? Naruto sighed and said, it can't be stopped so don't try. Itachi will kill his best friend. Two days later he wipes out the Uchiha clan leaving one survivor besides himself. His little brother Sasuke. The third said, why would he do that? 
Naruto closed his eyes and said, Do any of you know what the Mangekyu Sharingan is? Anko and Kurinai both shook their head no but the third sighed and said, I see. Naruto said, There are only two ways to get it and I only know two people who have gotten it. Each from a different way. The third said, I thought there was only one way. Naruto said, Kakashi finds another way but I never learned how. The third said, I should find a way to stop him. Naruto said, You can't. It has to happen to save the rest of the village. The third looked at Naruto and said, What do you mean? Naruto said, Itachi will leave the village and join a group of S-class missing nins that has already approached him offering membership into Thier organization. Nobody and I mean nobody in this village can currently stand up to the two of the members of them. The third said, How can you be sure Naruto? Naruto said, How can you hope to stop the man that killed the first Hokage and also Uchiha Madara the first Uchiha? Everyone stopped and eating the salad that was on the table and looked at Naruto. The third said, How can either of those two men still be alive? Naruto sighed and said, Kakuzu has a bloodline ability that lets him live as long as he has a heart that still lives. He has five of them. If one dies he can kill someone and replace his heart and gain Thier Chakra affinity. In the future Shikamaru killed one heart by tricking Kakuzu partner, Kakashi killed one heart with a Chidori and I killed three hearts with a Race Shuriken Jutsu which is a Rasengan with wind manipulation added to it. Currently I can't use it because it's too demanding on me. Uchiha Madara is another story altogether. You all know how the Uchiha were once Hayuga's right. Everyone nodded and Naruto said, he was a branch house member that wanted to be free of them so he ran and his luck would unfortunately have it he was the cause of my life being hell. Anko said, what do you mean? Naruto said, when he ran he discovered Kayubi's den. He offered Kayubi a deal and Kayubi altered his bloodline to give him the Sharingan freeing him from the Hayuga family but he was greedy also since he wanted to rub it in the face of the Hayugas. Guess what the deal was? Nobody answered and Naruto said, in exchange for the bloodline and the Mangekyu Sharingan. A way to overpower Hayugas he would give 100 of his descendants to Kayubi as payment. However Kayubi knew mortals did not live long lives and he knew that Madara would die before the deal was made so he cursed him and made him a half-demon. He would live up to 1000 years to see that his clan repaid its debt. He was also given that long in case his clan died and he could start over. That's why Kayubi attacked, he came to collect his debt. However Madara has become insane and wants even more power. He has discovered a way to become a ten-tail demon. The first ever. If he can capture the other one to nine-tail demons he will be able to become completely immortal. To do this he created the organization Itachi will join. With Kayubi dead he can't do it but he does not know that and gives me an advantage to stop him. The third said, so you are going to let Itachi go so you can stop him and this group later. Naruto said, yes, I told you I have had many lives. In all my lives I have never made it past the age of 18. Either the Leaf Village is destroyed, in a never-ending civil war, or in another great shinobi war. Itachi has to kill his clan so Orochimaru will come during my chunin exams after Sasuke. If I can take out Orochimaru then a month later I can take out two more members of this group. One being Itachi, I can then pick the other seven members off until I get to Madara and I can defeat him. The only way to kill him is to completely destroy every cell of his body. The third said, can you defeat him? Naruto said, the last time events lead to us meeting it came out a draw. I hope I can change just enough to beat him this time. I opened six celestial gates and dropped all my gravity and chakra weights and also five tails of Kayubi's chakra for two minutes. For that two minutes, it killed him but because my body was so damaged from it I would have liver my life as a cripple. I stopped my healing and let my body die so I could start over. The third sighed and said, can you tell us any more about what's going to happen? Naruto said, no, I would like to but they would change things too much. That's why I am leaving the village so I won't change things here too much. Let the Uchiha massacre play out and act normal until I return to take my genin test. Just make sure you put me on the genin team with Sasuke and Sakura under Kakashi. The third said, why should I listen to you or believe you for that matter? Naruto sighed and said, you told me this when I tried other stuff so you would listen. A monkey will climb higher to avoid a snake. 
Even with a frog and a snail's help he may not climb fast enough. A fox can kill the snake but only with the strength of a snail, the agility of a frog and the wisdom of a monkey. Everyone was looking at him in the third side and said, Damn it! There is no way you could know that saying even if it is changed. Naruto blinked and Anko asked what was it changed from. The third said, Instead of a fox it was a mongoose that could kill a snake. Only person who knows that saying is dead and has been for years. The first told it to me when I told him my plans for the Sonins and he died a few hours later so he could not have told anyone it or wrote it down. Very well, I will believe you on this but I don't like it. Naruto nodded and a butler brought a scroll over and Naruto said, I want you three to put a drop of blood on this scroll. Anko asked, why? Naruto said, it will give you access to this place after I leave. Anyone who tries to enter after the Genjutsu seals are on will be sent to the Hokage Mountain. I have scrolls of every jutsu I know with the exception of Rasengan and Horishin no jutsu in my library it's down the right hallway off the main living room. Can't miss it. There are a little over 11,000 jutsu from all the elements as well as medical and genjutsu. I give you all permission to look at them and learn them but don't try to read my journals. I put my personal thoughts on stuff in them and if anyone but a blood relation tries to open them it will kill them. Also don't teach any of those just you to anyone until I come back. Kakashi will also be allowed access but only you four. The third said, that's more jutsu than the entire leaf village. How did you get so many? Naruto said, you know how Kajbunshans learn everything you do and vice versa. Well I had Kajbunshans break into several other villages libraries and memorizes them as well as spent time aiming missing nin in other lives to learn them. It makes me more adaptable and a better ninja. The third nodded and a few clones brought out a plate with a parmesan chicken and some white rice with a bottle of champagne. The champagne was opened and everyone got a glass and enjoyed the food before Naruto said, I hope I answered some of your questions. Kurinai said, yes but we have more. Naruto nodded and said, then that will give us a chance to write each other. I will have a summon check with the Hokage once a month to pick up any scrolls and deliver them so he can know how we are doing or if something important is about to happen or happens he needs to know about. Also you all should know that only you three and Kakashi know who I really am but he does not know I am from a different life or anything like that so don't tell him. I don't want him to depend on me when I have to hold back. The third sighed as he sat his wine down and said, I am getting too old for this. Naruto smiled and said, I am sorry Aegean for being so mysterious and all but it has to be this way for now. I will be taking my real name by the end of the Chunin exams so do what you think is wise about that old man. Anko said, you said Orochimaru will be coming for Sasuke. Why? Naruto said, I have said too much already so please don't ask me that. I will say this. The only reason I could remove your curse seal Anko is because you do not want it. If someone does want it then I can't remove it. Also I should tell you he has spies in this village. Some even I don't know. I do know who his main one is but I can't do anything about him until later. Kurinai said, what are you really after Naruto? Why live all these lives and work so hard like you say you have? Naruto looked at her and each of his other guests and sighed as he dropped his hand showing the real Naruto who said in a voice that you could hear was older than time and loneliness that no one could comprehend, this Sensiheim. I want to be able to be me. Everyone already has ideas of me. Even you and Sarahime when you imagined why I hid who I am. I want to be the real me. Not somebody who has to hide himself from the world. Who can't show feelings to those he cares about or show how smart he is afraid the village would kill him for it. I want to be able to relax around people who actually care for you. I want to be able to show the world the real me and have a family who will look on at me with pride and love. That's why I do this. If you will excuse me but it's getting late. Enjoy your evening. And he got up and bowed to them and the three butlers in the room walked behind each person and they were consumed in flames appearing back at their own homes and the butlers went up in a puff of smoke. That night four people had very little sleep thinking of everything that they seen or heard or told. To be continued, remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.